Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from L.A. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. How are we doing today, guys? I'm doing good, I'm doing good old B.A., my guy. I love it. Yeah, How yeah. you doing, Skip? You know, speaking of coaches, <laughs> you realize it took the man that you call the GOAT coach, it took a 51-yard field goal at the buzzer for Bill Belichick and the Patriots to survive the 0-8 Jets? Are you proud of him now? I am. Yeah. He said, he said, but I tell you what I didn't yeah. do, I didn't get the brakes beat off me. 38-3. Really? Yeah, by an 0-8 team. Yeah, don't worry. There don't you go. Go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You said B.A.'s your guy. That's interesting, Yeah, I love B.A. Interesting. He's got a lot to say, and yeah. we're going to get right to it. The Bucks are still licking their wounds after their 38-3 loss to the Saints. And yesterday, Bruce Arians... Apparently, Shannon's guy explained the loss in a way that may have included a few shots at his QB, Tom Brady. Arians described one of Brady's three interceptions, quote, as just a poor throw and then explained the lack of Mike Evans production by saying Mike was open a bunch in that ball game. He didn't get targeted. That was all. Mike was open. After week one's loss to the Saints, remember, Arians made similar comments about Brady's play and then Tampa rattled off three wins in a row. So, Shannon, any problem with Arians criticizing Brady? No, because this is who he is. Um, Tom Brady had to have known what he was getting himself into, and this is what I tried to explain to people. I said, now, when B.A. offers his harsh critique and his analysis of Tom play, how is he going to accept that? Because we've seen him, Skip, openly do this to Jameis. Now, the problem that, see, the, the, the people... Skip Bayless's of the world is think because Brady. There's only one. <laughs> no, but you have a like you have a big supporter. You have mm-hmm. a large base that believes mm-hmm. like you because Tom Brady has won six Super Bowl mm-hmm. because he's been to nine. He's above reproach. How dare you? Co- how dare you correct him? How dare you openly criticize his play? Tom Brady has to be right, mm-hmm. and BA says he's absolutely wrong. Now, mm-hmm. and I told you this was going to happen. I said, now, how is he going to respond? He's not happy with this. Coach Belichick never, now, he, Skip, in the locker room, I mean, you were having conversations and team meeting, that's one thing, and it didn't get out to a later date and time. But to have the media and to have B.A. say this, and they get it, Tom Brady is seething. Never say it. Yeah, I understand that I have to play. And he'll say everything. He'll say all he'll try to keep it. And the, 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 the quarterback, uh, uh, the professional, the CEO, as he is, he's going to try to keep it as up above, uh, above the board as possible. But you know underneath, he's seething. He's seething because it bothered him. Now, he said now, Mike, he said Mike Evans was open a bunch. Now, what do you think Mike Evans is thinking? Because Mike Evans has been saying this all along. Now, what they tried to do was appease Mike by giving them two targets in the end zone. Because as Mike sees his production sleep, uh, 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 go down, he's like, well, at least I do have seven. At least I do have eight touchdowns. But then he sees what Devontae Adams is doing. He sees what all these other receivers are doing. He's like, hold on, wait a minute. When I had Jameis, I was getting these targets like this, and I was in the consideration as one of the better receivers. Nobody even mentions Mike Evans now. So, Skip, I knew this was going to be a problem if Brady at any point in time struggled because B.A. doesn't have a filter. That's what it is. And the thing that it shouldn't be a problem to Tom. The only way it should be a problem to Tom, if he had this conversation, he when he picks up the phone, he calls Tom, uh, uh, Jason Light, I think that's the general manager, and he calls B.A. And they have a conversation. He says, now, Bruce, I don't probably, but everybody calls him B.A. B.A., this is yada, yada, yada. This is what I like. Because that's what I did when I went to Baltimore. I had to sit down with Brian Billick in his office. He says, okay. I said, Brian, look, I don't have a problem with you coaching me publicly. I don't have a problem with you criticizing me. I said, but don't curse me. That's all I ask. You want to coach me in front of the team? Have at it. But Skip Bayless thinks Tom Brady is beyond reproach, and this shouldn't happen to him. But this is who he is. B.A. is 68. If I'm not mistaken, he's 68 years of age. The likelihood a man in his late 60s pivoting from what he's been his entire life it's not very good. So I don't have a problem with it. I told you your guy didn't play well. You making excuses. There are no excuses to be made. He mm-hmm. didn't play well. The end. Obviously, you don't have a problem with this because 
You sit across me on a <laughs> daily basis ridiculing the greatest player ever to play the hardest position in sports. Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. You ridicule him on a daily basis. So now you're loving it because all the Brady haters out there and they have come out of hiding full force and full throat. They can now say, look, even his head coach is ridiculing him because this is just straight ridicule. <laughs> this is just the, the disrespect here is just disgusting to me because I can't help asking this question. Who the hell is Bruce Arians? I ask that question because it deserves to get asked right here today. What has he ever done to deserve this? He, he, Who is he? How many Super Bowls has he won? Skip, he hasn't won any. But Tom, Tom, Brady, Lord. But Tom Brady hitched his, his pickup truck and drove his butt down to Central Florida, so it tells me something about B.A., he hitched it to two Pro Bowl receivers, and he hitched it to two stud tight ends. He's lost one of them, O.J. Howard, for the rest of the mm -hmm. year. And he hitched it to a team that he saw had a defense on the rise that could be a playoff caliber defense. Sure. Was not on Sunday no. night at home against New Orleans. So, real quick, let's look at... I, I can't call him B.A. He doesn't deserve any <laughs> nicknames. You're going to call him Bruce. Gonna He's just him. Bruce Arians to me. <laughs> <laughs> this man is one and two as a head coach in the playoffs. One and two. This man, once upon a time in 1974, actually was the starting quarterback for Virginia Tech uh -huh. when they ran the wishbone. Yeah. He threw that whole season three touchdowns to seven interceptions. He completed 44% of his passes, and he has the audacity. He dares to sit back and take shots at Tom Brady, the obvious goat of quarterbacks. And why does he do it? Because he has an ego even bigger than Tom Brady's, and it is completely undeserved. <laughs> he, his ego was built because he has coached four very good to great quarterbacks. He coached, let's see, Peyton Manning. Mm -hmm. He coached, uh, let's see, Andrew Luck. Yep. He coached Carson Palmer. And he coached Big Ben Roethlisberger. Correct. I just named three guys who were the first overall pick in the draft. <laughs> I named another one, Big Ben Roethlisberger, who's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He was the 11th overall pick in the draft. And help me out. Do you really believe that Bruce Arians made any of those four quarterbacks any better than they were going to be? But, no! Skill, but here's the thing. He got all of those guys early in their career so they could handle this kind of harsh critique. You're getting Tom Brady in year 21. Well, he's handled it fine. He's not going to fire back. No, 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 no. But I'm, I'm saying, yeah, behind, this uh, is a conversation. I, I'm he sure he is seething. Right. I, I would agree with you. But I got to tell you, people around this league now in the know, people inside other franchises, that they're looking on Bruce Arians right now as just coming off as foolish, buffoonish, clownish, all that was was blame deflection. Every time they lose a big game, and they have lost now the opener to New Orleans, they lost at Chicago, and then New Orleans at home. Right. Two big division games against your arch rival. You lost those games. He has criticized Tom Brady after each of those games as if to say, don't look at me. I, I didn't do it. He did it. I'm just the head coach. Did... Uh, did the Tampa Bay Buccaneers look ready to play on Sunday night? No, they did not. Were they smelling themselves, as you would say? Were, were they starting to believe the hype? Were they ready psychologically to, to match firepower with a division rival that was flying under the radar all week? They were not. Does the head coach deserve some of the blame for that? You better believe that he does sure. because they were as flat as pancakes coming right out of the gate on Sunday night. You could I tweeted it within two minutes. Of the game. They were not ready to play at the Saints level. Well, the question that I have for you and those other that, that think like you, if B.A. gets criticism for not having them ready to play, I don't hear you guys talk about B.A. getting credit when Tom Brady plays well. When he throws those five touchdowns against San Diego, y'all ain't mentioned B.A. When he throw, when he comes back, when he plays well, y'all don't I, mention I'm going to ask you again. Who the hell is B.A.? You know who, who he is. Who the hell is he? Hold on, Skip. What is he? Skip. What, what has he done to deserve any credit or blame either way, to tell you the truth? But here's, He's along for the greatest ride of his life. He should drop to his knees every night and thank God that at age 68, <laughs> Tom Brady fell out of heaven into his lap in Tampa Bay. Skip. Seriously. Skip. First of all, 
you, t you criticize Coach Belichick all the time. You said he was a lacrosse player. The greatest coaches weren't the greatest uh, no, players. No doubt. I, I got it. But I'm just talking about having the audacity to publicly criticize the greatest quarterback ever. When What is the mantra of all the head coaches? You played for one in Mike yeah. Shanahan. Did he ever criticize John Elway no, publicly? No. You, you don't do it. Okay, let me just speak from my side of the table. Not those type of quarterbacks. That, you yeah, I got you. I got you. When Jameis is leading the league in turnovers by, uh, let's see, he had 35 last year. The, the next on the list was 13. Right. When, when you do that, okay, if you want to criticize that, when you know Jameis is pretty much going out the back door yeah. pretty quickly. Right. Then, no, he had 30, 30 interceptions, 33 30, touchdowns, 30 interceptions, the, and five fumbles. Five. So it's 35. I said 35 okay, total okay, turnovers. Yeah, okay. Tur total yeah, turnovers. Yeah. The next on the list was 23, right. actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the point is, I, I had the great fortune of learning football from these men, Bill Walsh, the great Bill Walsh, mm -hmm. Tom Landry, and Jimmy Johnson. I spent hours talking to all three of those men about how you, how you coach pro football at the highest mm -hmm. level. Did any of those three ever dare to criticize their franchise quarterbacks publicly? No. You don't. It's the golden rule because the position is too hard to play in the right. first place. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to undermine their credibility with the fans or with the locker room. Correct. You, you don't want to undercut them. You, you, you don't want to look like you cut their legs out from right. under them when they have to be the leader of the franchise right. on the field. The coach can't play. Right. In mm -hmm. the end, it's up to that guy because that guy is going to influence outcomes the way no position in any other sport except maybe pitcher in baseball, but they can only pitch every five days. You're right. But right. this is every game. It's all on that quarterback. Correct. So you don't do this. You 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 don't t take little. They're they're so they're, they're so sarcastic. They're so they're they're so dismissive. Like he just didn't. Uh, Mike just didn't get any targets. So let's look at what happened on Sunday <laughs> night, shall we? Tom Brady came into that game having transformed the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, even in your point of view into a solid football yeah. outfit. You know, where, where they were actually not turning the ball over. They weren't right. committing penalties. Right. They, they weren't allowing sacks. It looked like they were on a roll. It mm -hmm. looked like they had launched toward a home Super Bowl possibility. Mm -hmm. And Tom Brady at that point, according to Pro Football Focus, had the most big time throws in the whole league of any quarterback. And he had the fewest turnover worthy throws of any quarterback in pro football going into Sunday night. Well, that's that's pretty great, mm -hmm. given the fact that you're 43 and you started completely over with all new teammates, all new offense, obviously all new coaches in a whole new setting in a in a division you don't know to, to get to that moment. That was pretty great. And then what happened? Tom wanted Antonio Brown. And not only did he want him, but he pushed to force feed him in, in the first game he's going to play after two practices. Mm -hmm. He practices twice with the team. And all of a sudden on Sunday night, you and you're the head coach, so you got to sign off on it. You play him 39 snaps. That that those are starter snaps, yeah. right? Yeah. And and what happened in those 30, you got 39 there, you played Mike Evans 43 snaps and Chris Godwin 47 snaps. But Chris Godwin hadn't played and he, he'd missed four games, but he's coming off broken finger. He's got it all taped yeah. up, you know, and he's trying to catch it without yeah. hitting the, the broken <laughs> finger. Yeah. It's hard, man. Yeah, you course. know this. And the point is that look at the targets. Look at look at what happened. He throws five balls to Antonio. He throws six to Gronkowski, who, by the way, had the, one of the worst games of his career also. He throws six to Mike Evans and, and six to Chris Godwin. He also threw six to Fournette. Right. Well, I, I can't distribute it any better trying to spread the sugar, you know, trying to right. keep him as happy as possible. I, I think the thing is, is that he's looking at it, Skip. Let, let's, let's get down to what's the crooks of this. Bruce Arians is upset that he doesn't get chunk plays in his offense. His offense is predicated, Skip, on pushing the ball down the field. Tom Brady has had success when he throws underneath, he throws to the running back, he throws to Gronk, and then he gets into the red zone and he okay, throws a touchdown. Okay, so what did you see on Sunday night? I saw him trying to force the ball downfield right, like crazy. Right, exactly. Like no risk at lots of biscuits. I'm throwing biscuits everywhere. Right, and that's the problem with Tom. That's not him. 
So BA is asking him to do right. something that he's... When has this offense been at its best? Would when he listen? throws bite-sized biscuits. Yes. Like, like yeah. one bite yeah. biscuits yeah. just here, right. here, here, right. here, here. Right. Until you just wear the defense out. Thank you. Okay? But, but Skip, that's not And you actually have this thing called a running game. Yes. They had... Four real runs, as you said, the fifth, the kneel down, down count. Okay, right. but four runs. It was the fewest in the history of the league. Right. Well, in large part, or in some part, it was because you fell behind so fast, your defense could never stop Drew Brees. I mean, you think, put this in context, Skip. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers ran the ball for the entirety of a ball game as many times as as when they fell, the, uh, New England fell behind 28-3. They ran... New England ran the ball four times in the second in the second half, and they were behind 28-3. You ran the ball four times in a ball game, and you was out. The worst, you you started down seven nothing. Skip, they're a good running team. Roe Jones can run the football. He was like a top five, top six rusher, and you give him how many how many carries? It's like okay, we can't run. Okay, that's throw the ball, Tom. Okay, whose fault is that? That's B. That's B. That's Thank B. A. You. And Brian Thank language. you. Thank you. You, you can't. And, and B. A. Doesn't call the plays directly, right. but he obviously. Overseas, he overrules. He he is the final say. Skip, you make it bear. I don't care who the quarterback is. Joe Montana, John Elway, agreed. Patrick Mahomes. I agree. If you let the defense know all we're going to do is throw the football and say we can just pin our ears back, they're gonna come get you. Okay. And did they come get him yep. from the first snap? <laughs> basically, from the first snap. I saw the stat on Pro Football Focus. He was under fire 56% of the time. He was under pressure, yes. which was the second highest rate of the week right okay so we we know this i've told you this about tom brady when he's 23 33 or 43 if if you're all over him he's not mobile right and he he has good pocket feet he used right. to have great pocket feet but he's not quite as quick as he, he used to be he has what so, they call you, phone boot quick okay? he can but, side but, to side but, but you, you better give him a couple of seconds yeah. you bet, he'll get rid of it fast but if he has people in his face immediately and you don't allow him to step into his throws mm -mm. It's going to be chaos. Right. And now he's trying to look for number 81, which happens to be Antonio Brown. Where, where's 81? Wait, I got two Pro Bowl receivers. I got the GOAT tight end. And I got a receiver who for five years was, was probably the best receiver yep. in this league. Mm -hmm. Now what am I going to do? And I, I got maybe a second less than I've had in the six previous games, mm -hmm. right? Dating yeah. back to the first New Orleans game. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to be chaos, mm -hmm. and it was, and it it got off wrong. And then the the, sh the even the bigger shock of the night to me is that Todd Bowles' defense couldn't even slow down Drew Brees yeah. until it was thirty-one to nothing. Did they did they even punt? And, and I, I'm not so sure they would have slowed them down then if they didn't get that strip that that fumble yep. and Jerry Cook drops the ball. Okay. So it might have been for, it might have been forty-five nothing at one point. Okay, so it's not a day when you take shots at the goat franchise quarterback. You just don't do it. It, it, you, you can't tell me just because you got the big ego and you want to flex and you want to say, don't, 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 don't look at me, man. With, with the go don't look at me. Loaded. It was him. I, I can't throw it. I don't know. Mike Evans is open a lot. He just didn't get enough targets. Well, he got six like everybody else got. Well, how about this here? How about you tell Thomas, Edward, Jameis, Winston, Brady Sr. Mm. to stop turning the ball over? Mm. Well, how much has he turned it over, had he turned it over before Sunday night? Not very much. He had four for the year. And now he's got seven. two and three. He has five out of seven came against this games. team. Right. Okay? This team's got his number. This team has their whole number. This team has B.A.'s number. <laughs> well, the thing that they can do that very few teams can do is that because they have two corners that can be physical, Janoris Jenkins and Mark and uh, Marshawn Lattimore, they can be physical. They have a, a, a safety who can take the tight end and Jink, Malcolm Jenkins, and they have a front four skip. They don't have to compromise their back end by blitzing. They got four guys that can just go get the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And when you can do that, and without compromising your secondary, you can cause Tom Brady. Because what you want to do, Skip, it, the first play of the game you mentioned, uh, uh, Cam Jordan hit him. Hit him. Now, he hit him inside his head, but I'm, he got there. I don't care whether it's a foul or not a foul. He got there. He got there. And that was, that was for like, hold on. This is the first play of the game, but I'm already getting hit. Normally, yep. Skip, it's, Agreed. It, it take you a couple of, totally agree. A couple of series to get hit. And he's like, well, damn, this is what I'm up against tonight. And, and I told you, you would have taken some of the sting out of it if you throw a flag on that. At right. least you get a first down and 15 yards, and you feel like, okay, here we go. Right. Instead, there's no flag thrown. 
and he got rocked, and he threw. It, it was a well, his arms getting right. hit, and it was right. just a complete right. misfire. But see, I, I think the thing also, Skip, is that once you get a, the best thing to happen to Tom, and he'll it probably he'll never admit this was him leaving New England because so many things have to go right for him now. He needs a running game, and he needs max protection. Now, he has guys outside, but if you don't have time to throw it to him, Skip, I don't care who you got out there. You can have Jerry Rice, you can have Randy Moss and, and Chris, all, and whomever you want. If you can't get protected, you hit your back, your fifth, uh, your back foot, and somebody, now you got to move, it's not going to work. So for them, they're going to have to get back. B.A. is going to have to sign up because, Skip, what I've learned in all my 14 years of coaching, coaches would rather lose their way than win someone else's way. And B.A. is winning. But he's not happy winning like that mm. because that's not his way. Okay, so I ask you, what good did it, what, what purpose did it serve to criticize Tom Brady? What, what, what good did it do for the football team to criticize Tom Brady? Well, I, I don't think it does. I don't think any good because Tom says I didn't play well. Tom says I got to play better. He knows he has to play better. Who, like, who, who thought he did play well? Nobody. Oh, you probably would have gave him a B. No, if we gave him a grade, no, you gave him a B. I, I would not. But I would have given him a D. See, but I tried to tell you. I, I warned you of this. But you told me they were looking forward to the Saints. That's why they overlooked the Giants. I agree. Now, I said, Skip, there are some things that I see. Yep. Because if that's data, Skip, Giants should have beat them. If that's da Daniel, D Daniel Jones turned the ball over, made horrible interceptions, if he was a it would have even been close. They would have blew the doors off the books. Mm. I said, Skip, I see some things that's a problem. Now, I don't really pay any attention to pro football focus, but since you like them, pro football focus at the beginning of the season said the, the, uh, the Bucks secondary was the weak link. Mm -hmm. And I see, when I look at them, I said they're young. Because they didn't know how good Antoine Winfield Jr. was going to be as a rookie, and he has solidified the back end. He's good. Not Sunday night. But, but here's the thing, though, Skip. That, back, that secondary is predicated on pressure. You see when they didn't what, get... What, what secondary is it? But Skip, I mean, it just... But, but sometimes, some, sometimes you, need to, you need to be right there so the guy can do th make him do this mm -hmm. to bring it down. Drew Brees was going back his back foot hitting, ball gone. Mm. The one time that he, did, that he had to hold the ball, he still ended up getting a touchdown because he threw the little out route on the goal line to Emmanuel Sanders. Mm. That was really the only time they made him clutch it. Other than that, back foot hit, ball gone. How many times did you see a Drew Brees receiver <laughs> catch a ball with nobody within 10 yards? Yeah. I'm saying, are, are they even out there? Wait, are they playing with like eight men on defense? Well, it looks like well, at this they're a heavy pressure team. They're a heavy man-to-man -man team. And all of a sudden, it seems like they dropped the zone like they were trying to fool them. So Drew Brees is like, there's some quarterbacks, if you can't play zone, you got, you, know, you, you got to mix it up. But if you give Drew Brees a heavy dose of just zone, he's like, oh, y'all just going to do that? Y'all just going to drop off? Okay. Mm. But he did get Mike Evans, not Mike Evans, Skip. He did get Mike Thomas back. He yeah. also got Emmanuel Sanders back. So now that really opens up the field because now you see all these other guys. And still, I don't know what they're thinking. Taysom Hill's coming in the game. He's either going to catch it or he's going to run it. It's simple as that, Skip. I mean, what, what y'all think he's in the game for? As window dressing, he's going to do something with the ball. Well, if he were out there right now, he'd <laughs> still be running, and they still wouldn't have him on the ground. He faster than I thought, Skip, because he they they uh picked they uh, snapped the ball to him, and he jumped through the hole. And we know JPP can run. Mm -hmm. He pulled no. away from JPP. He did. I was like, I ain't know he had wheels like that, but I think he ran like four four a uh, uh, low did. four five, Skip. Yeah, to like two thirty. Yeah. Okay, my final thought on BA, as you call it. <laughs> He better be careful because if they do miss the playoffs, as, as the billions playoffs. of people want them to miss the playoffs, no, they're not miss the playoffs, if they do, he will be out of work. And if he's out of work, it's possible he won't get another head coaching job. No, Skip, he, he, they're not going to miss the playoffs. I think they're, 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 they're a good football team who had, a bad, who had a, a bad outing. But I think the biggest thing, they need to commit. Either we're going to do what Tom can do what Tom does really well, which is – Underneath stuff is skip, and that's okay. If that's what he, if that's my strong suit, play to my strength. Don't play to my weakness. Be I get it. You want to throw the ball down the field, but that's not what Tom is at this stage of his career. He can be. Yeah, he can be. He's thrown a bunch of good deep balls. <clears throat> See little Scotty Miller, who got only three targets but skip, on Sunday night. Ba is about putting the ball up. Let Mike Evans go make jump balls. Mm -hmm. Let Chris. But that's not Tom. Can't unwire. You can't unwire tw twenty years, Skip. In six months. Mm. So now you have come around saying they are going to be a playoff team. No, they're, they're I, I play thought you just completely dismissed them on. They got an extra one. 
Yeah. They got an extra seed. Oh, so that they're going to slip in the back. Yeah, they're winning that division. We got that case on that. We got them cases on that division. We That's have what, no cases on. Skip, that you division. said there was no I winning division. Not. Well, we didn't bet any cases on it. I got. We got to pull the tape. Mm. Mm. Okay, pull the tape. Pull the tape. Uh, and, okay. and then Carolina got something for y'all too. Mm. I don't know oh, if I remember oh, oh, that. Oh, Teddy, oh, oh, Teddy B. We might have five cases. Oh, on Teddy that. KGB. That could yeah. get interesting. No mercy. The Patriots rallied from a 10-point deficit in the fourth quarter against the winless Jets before escaping with a 30-27 victory. New England was down most of the evening, allowing Jets backup QB Joe Flacco to throw for three touchdowns before storming back in the final six minutes. Cam Newton finished with two rushing touchdowns, 274 passing yards, and he also set up the game-winning field goal with an eight-play drive in the final 47 seconds. The win snaps the Patriots' four-game losing streak and gives them renewed hope for a wild card push. So, Shannon, uh, your biggest takeaway from last night was what? Skip, is going to be a struggle for the Patriots all season long. And after watching that game, I'm convinced without Stephon Gilmore, the defense has even less talent than the offense. And that's saying something, Skip. Mm -hmm. Now, I know they had a lot of opt-outs, Hightower, Chung. Uh, they let uh, Roberts go in free agency. They Van Oy go. Jamie Collins is gone. Skip, I get all that. But Skip, that defense, ooh, Joe Flacco looked like the Joe Flacco that went on the road and won the Super Bowl. You know, he went to Denver, Skip. He went to New England. He looked like that Joe Flacco last night. And Joe Flacco was about to get them out of the Trevor Lawrence Derby. And I think somebody called out and said, hey, don't you mess this up for us. And then all of a sudden, for some unexplicable reason, unexplained reason, mm -hmm. Skip, Joe Flacco had been dealing all night. Yeah. And if you look at the interception that he threw, he had a guy in the flat and he had a guy coming across on the over. Like wide open. Wide open. He made up his mind. They say, look here, throw the post. Well, what if he's not open? Throw the post. Skip, the guy's double covered. And he throws it. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it. And then, Skip, you, you, you stop Cam. Cam stumbles and falls. Yep. And then somehow you bring 12 men for the block the field goal. How do you do that? No, Skip, it wasn't like, because now you, you can... You stopped him. <laughs> you, you, you're back in charge, right? And you get 12 men on the field and give them the first down? It's not like now, Skip, because before, you could like, try to sneak the special teams on there and try to catch them with 12 men on the field. You can't even do that on offense, Skip, because the, the umpire get right there and hold it. No, you substitute it. We yep. got to let them give them a fair chance to substitute. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see them uh -huh. bring, and you got 12 men on the field? I'm like, man, y'all Jets being the Jets. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a grind. Cam did what? There are times that I look at Cam and I say, man, that looks like the old Cam Newton. And then there are other times I say, man, that's like an old Cam Newton. Mm. Yeah. They're really devoid of talent. I don't know what Tom Brady would have been, been able to do in this situation. I don't him. either. I agree with that. I mean, Cam might have been the only guy that some of those uh, – uh, throws that he was able to make after escaping pressure because yep. the guy, they had him dead to right, and he ducked one guy, yep. and he sidestepped another guy. Yep. How he got out of some of the things that he got out, Skip, is unbeknownst to me. But, Skip, the Patriots, man, wow, this, that look, Skip, that was hard to watch last night. Mm -hmm. It was really hard to watch. Uh, but in the end, Cam came, made the plays that he needed to make. I don't know what the just Skip, it's eight seconds on the clock. They have a timeout. And you're playing off coverage. You let the guy run down and just fall down and Cam throwing the ball. Don't nobody want to press or anything. And maybe, mm. maybe you make him the time runs out. Yep. I just don't get the Jets what they were doing. Kudos to Cam and the Patriots for winning that game. But the mere fact that you were down by 10 points to that team lets you know that the Patriots really not that talented. Mm. So it came to this for the once proud New England Patriots. In the end, it took a 51-yard <laughs> field goal at the buzzer for them to escape New York or mm -hmm. New Jersey with a 30-27 to 27 win over an 0-8 Jets team that, that I remind everybody has just unloaded many of its best players, right? Mm -hmm. Because, as we know, they traded away Jamal Adams to Seattle. They, they cut Le'Veon. They traded their captain and one of their best interior defense alignments, Steve McClendon, yeah. to the Buccaneers. Right. Avery, coached him when he was yep. there. Avery Williamson just went to the Steelers, pretty good linebacker. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jordan uh, Williams went to the 49ers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so you've got, you, you're just, un obviously, C.J. Mosley hadn't been able to play all right. year. So so you're just missing the guts of your, of right. your defense. Mm -hmm. 
And I give you that Stefan didn't play, Lawrence Guy didn't play or couldn't play for um, New England. Bentley couldn't play. But still, it's like, who's left? It, it was hard for me to watch also. And the, the best thing Cam Newton did in this football game was he did not turn the ball over. Right. Because if he had, They'd lost. they would have lost. Mm -hmm. And in the second half, you will rarely see such ball control as New England exhibited for, for the third and fourth quarters. Because look at this. In the second half, <laughs> New England ran 47 plays to only 15 mm -hmm. for Flacco's team. Right. The best thing Cam did in the second half, and I can't believe I'm saying this, was he kept Joe Flacco off the field. Because, to your point, the guy <laughs> I used to call Joe Fluco in regular season games had turned back into playoff Flacco. Yep. He was on fire. He was looking like the great old days in Baltimore when, when he would deal against Tom Brady or go to Denver and throw a Hail Flacco and beat <laughs> your Bronco, beat yep. Peyton, right? Yep. yep. And... The, the best thing was that <laughs> in the fourth quarter, it, the, the time of possession was 14 minutes for New England to one minute for Flacco. Yeah. So we had the ball for one minute. But to your point, he goes bombs away. I, I don't know why. He just, it's just like he wanted to throw the, the, the dagger. Let and, me show you. I still got an arm. Yeah, I got an arm. And he's got a big arm. <laughs> he still and, does. And he threw a what looked like could be when it left his hand, maybe a home run to Denzel Mims, who I just love from Baylor. I loved him before that draft. He used to torment my Sooners. Mm -hmm. He is a stud young receiver, and he is a building block for the Jets. Right. But he was double covered like crazy, and J.C. Jackson just outruns him to the ball and right. catches it. And then we turn right around after that, and Cam's got the ball first and 10, 28-yard line, and, and he goes incomplete, incomplete, incomplete on third and 10 and they get a defensive holding call that saved the game for cam because if if they have to punt there i i still don't know if they're going to stop flacco right. that was it was 27 to 20 at that point here's the first misfire that's a, i'm sorry that was the third one um and they, they, they got the call right. They got the call. So the point is he he looked like he had sort of lost it and gone off target for those three throws and it didn't matter because they got the holding, and then he continued to drive, 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 made a bunch of third and fourth down plays, mostly with him right. just carrying the mail. But before that, Skip, remember, he missed a wide open Myers. He did. He on the scene. Yep. He, oh, they blew the coverage, and he had he, him wide he, open. And he, he missed overthrew him badly. Him. Yes. But think who Jacoby Myers is. As you pointed out, he played quarterback <laughs> at North Carolina State and went undrafted. Yep. And he's all you got, basically, because Edelman's – out yes as usual and jacoby myers had 14 targets caught 12 balls for 169 yards that's a night mm -hmm. but it's jacoby myers that's right how far is he going to take you <laughs> how, how far are you going to go with jacoby and it looks like cam's got a new wavelength right. with him where he trusts him yep. which is nice for him but still you you, you look at the, if they don't just dominate the second half and in, in time of possession yeah, it's like they almost won by 14 minutes time yeah, of possession yeah skip, 22 you, to let, 8 let that sink in skip you are, dominate top time of possession by 14 minutes you run th i think 32 more plays 32 33 more plays and it takes a 51 yard walk off field goal for you to win the game that just shows you the uh, the, the the depth or the lack thereof of talent yeah. that's on your ball club if any other team has that many more plays, has that kind of time of possession, oh, you're getting beat by double figure. There ain't no walk-off field goal winning that game. Nope. Especially with no turnovers. Now, you turn the ball over, oh, okay, I get it. But with no turnovers, and you have the ball 14 more minutes, and you need a 51-yard field goal, you're not winning that game. But, Skip, what happened is, is that when Stephon Gilmore is out, you can say, Steph, take the best receiver. And now we're going to play coverage to everybody else. But because Gilmore is out, and you got a bunch of basically pieces. They play hard, Skip. They play hard. But the devoid of talent. Stephon Gilmore is a different animal. Yep. But this is the thing of sign of things to come because I don't see a situation in which Gilmore is back there next year. So you're going to get used. I mean, you think it's bad now. Stephon Gilmore is not going to be coming back in 2021. Yep. So for me, the, the spotlight was on by ESPN. The best jet on the field is their rookie left tackle, Mekhi Becton. And... I don't know what happened, but somehow in the second quarter after their spotlighting featuring him, 
he gets a chest injury, and he's gone the rest of the game. Well, at least I was enjoying watching him just road grade people. Oh, yeah. And I thought, well, maybe Frank Gore can run behind right. Becton, and maybe they can sort of win the game that way. But, no, he was gone, and Sam Darnold obviously was out. You liked Sam Darnold before the draft. I did not. And now it looks like they're playing for Trevor Lawrence, and obviously they're going to have a high pick, and they're going to have a pick of whichever quarterback they right. fall in love with before the draft. And ESPN reported last night that for Sam Darnold, they probably can't get much more than a two and a five. So you can't even recoup your high draft. Oh, no, you never, you never gonna get what you get what you what you took to get him, especially when, when you're giving him away, yeah, right? You, the mere fact that you trade him, Skip. Yep. So if you pay a hundred million dollars for something, you like, and here it is. Two years later, you try to get rid of it. Okay, what's wrong with it? Mm. Why, why are you trying to get off of this so quick? I mean, I thought you really loved because all the scouting that you've done says, okay, this is our guy. Yep. And nah, I, I totally agree. But Skip, I want to see Cam get a season in which he trains because we know he had that injury to his foot. He had the injuries to his shoulder. So he spent and then the he entire... he had a COVID bout. Right, right. so he had yep. the entire offseason, yep. and all he did was rehab. Yep. Because there are times... I mean, I've never seen Cam stumble so much. That ain't Cam. Mm -mm. They, I, mean, Cam I mean, Cam is, what, 31 years of age? Cam, Cam was, was stumbling like he was 37, 38. Uh, I would agree. So yep. he needs to get his legs back under him, get trained up, and I want to see. Now, I don't know if that's going to be in New England, mm. but I know Cam is Cam is, is better than is better than and Spurs. Because he showed in Spurs last night he still can play at a very high level. Yep. But I just need to see the consistency, mm. and I think that will come with an offseason in which he trains and not rehab. Mm. Somewhere Tom Brady was watching that game with empathy for Cam Newton, yeah, saying, yeah. I know what he's going through, yeah. and I'm happy I'm not there. And I'm tight in. Do they got tight ends on, on, on the New England's roster? Yeah, Ryan Izzo. He was out there all night. He did, that's yeah. all he, that's all he was doing, out, out there. there. Yep. He wasn't doing it. He wasn't, <laughs> contrib he yeah. wasn't contributing. Uh, what were the quotes from Tom a couple weeks ago? He wishes the Patriots well. Yeah. Guys, that's what he's thinking no, he as, he wa as he's watching on. <laughs> no, he uh, does All right, how about we talk about the Cowboys? Shannon has been saying that the Cowboys offense should run through Zeke while Dak is sidelined for the year. But Elliott struggled against the Steelers, averaging less than three yards per carry. Meanwhile, his backup, Tony Pollard, had nine carries for a team-high 57 yards. And Pollard also had two 20-yard runs, while Elliott only had has won this season despite getting over 100 more carries than the second string running back. So, Shannon, do you still feel the Cowboys should be Zeke's team right now? I think the, I think with Dak being out, Skip, they should still be a running team first. Now, I do believe that Pollard has earned the right to get more carries in the ball game. Now, what we've seen, what we normally see, Skip, when we see change of pace backs, when they get more and more carries, that goes down. Because there's such a change of pace, because you have to understand, Zeke is what I call a bullback now, Skip. The explosion through the hole, we're not seeing that. So now Pollard is able to get through, get to and get through the hole quicker than Zeke. Mm. So he's going to – but if you play him, the more you play him, he's not a guy that's going to give you better and better production as he gets more and more carries. He's a basically a 10, 11, maybe 12 – carry a game guy that's going to give you great production. He'll give you five, seven yards per carry. But then people start thinking, well, just think if we gave him 20, 25 carries, Skip, his body's not built to carry the ball like that. Zeke has to understand he's going to have to share more of the running load because, Skip, Zeke has got a lot of carries. He's getting some mileage up on that body. And although it might look good, that engine has been running for a while. They put a lot of miles, a lot of, and Zeke runs to contact. Zeke is not a guy that make you miss. Zeke is trying to run through you. Zeke is not running out of bounds. So that's accumulated over his early five-year career. So I do believe Tony Pollard has earned more carries than what he's getting. Also, not necessarily that it has to be Zeke's team, but it definitely needs to be a running team. Now, Zeke is averaging 4.1 yards on first down. But, Skip, I look at it yesterday, when, I mean, Sunday. Hell, I know Zeke going to get the ball on first down. You got a bat, you got Andy Dalton and you got uh, uh, Bad, uh, uh, Danucci, mm -hmm. and now you got Gary Gilbert. What the hell I think you think you're going to do on first down? You actually think I'm going to let you think you're going to play action pass and throw a deep ball? You're going to turn around and either hand it or pitch it to Zeke. That's what you're going to do, Skip. So I'm gearing up on first down to shut down your run. And you got, they got no imagination. I'm looking at all these other teams and all the imagination that they run in the running game, Skip. 
and I'm looking at the Cowboys. Mm. Hand off left. Yep. Hand off right. Toss left. Toss right. And then at the most inopportune time, Skip, we're going to try to hit you with a reverse wide receiver pass mm. and get stopped for a 16-yard loss. But, Skip, he's earned the, he, I agree. Tony Pollard has earned the right to get more carries. It doesn't necessarily have to be, okay, this is a Zeke team now. This needs to be a running team because I don't believe Garrett Gilbert now, Stephen Jones says when Andy comes back, Andy's going to get the job. But I don't believe Andy can throw us to wins. Mm. I believe that things going to have to be play action because I still don't trust your offensive line. Now, they did a, a commendable job. But the question is, what happens when you play a, a four down front and those guys don't walk and you have to put those guys in coverage? Because I still don't trust your offensive line, Skip. Mm. I still believe they're better, they're better run blockers than they are pass protectors. Mm. So, I preface everything I'm about to say with this breaking news. <laughs> Trevon Diggs, a, a real bright spot, a, a real breakthrough rookie out of Alabama that I was starting to fall completely in love with, has a broken foot and is out for oh. four, four to six weeks. Oh, y'all. <laughs> four to six. Skip, he was, our best, he was the best guy in the second day. I wondered why he missed stretches of the game the other night. He did try to come back in and play right. on what, what was a broken foot. Wow. But, hey. He, he was looking like a player, yeah. like somebody who could be a difference maker, yes. a ball hawk, somebody who had amnesia, who, who can get roasted and toasted, you but he have bounce play back and he will take it away from you. Yep. And he's gone, so maybe it's just snake bitten you. Maybe it's just <laughs> not meant to be, which brings me back to Ezekiel Elliott. Still love him, but for me, he has become the saddest story in the in the NFL on the field. I'm not talking about some life and death sort of story. I'm talking about as a football player, his decline is it's hard to watch for me because I I loved him so much. And I've told you now for two seasons, I can't see it anymore. And I think you're finally coming around to he's just not what he used to be. Mm -mm. And usually you don't see the decline this quickly in Correct. a running back because he's still 25 years of Correct. age. And yet I keep using Especially with no injury. No, now, Skip, you nothing. know you got a knee injury, you have a, a major I, injury, I we it. get it, but not like this. He's had nicks and knacks, yeah. nothing but, serious. But running back's going to have nicks right. and knacks. Yep, they are going to. So I give the decline numbers again. Rookie year, he leads the league 109 yards rushing per game. 98 is second year, 96 is third year, both led the league. Then it falls to 85 last year, and he's down to 64 this year. He's on pace for 1,000 yards. 1,000 yeah. yards for Ooh. a running back is nothing now wow. in this league. So Sunday against the Steelers, they hung in, and we're actually – we had Garrett Gilbert throwing into the end zone to maybe win the game. I know it was still a long shot, but in that game, Zeke carried 18 times for 51 yards. That's 2.8 per try. That ain't Zeke. And what did we see? He he was making Tony Pollard look like a pro bowler right. because Tony would come in, and Tony's got a little wiggle and a little burst. I'm not talking about he he's not a pro bowl running back, but he's no. pretty good. And compared to Zeke running, as I say, in Cabo sand, look like he's running in slow motion. It, it looks like Tony Pollard can fly. And he had two runs, Tony Pollard did, Sunday, of 20 yards. 20 yards. Do you realize what's happened to Zeke on 20-plus yard runs? He had 17 his rookie year. That's pretty good. Then he missed those four games his second year, so he had nine. But then third year, he had 15. That'll work. Then last year, it fell off to seven. This year, so far, he has one 20-yard run. So Tony Pollard in one game had two 20-yard runs. Zeke has one for the whole year. He just... He, there's no home run to him anymore. There, well, there's no, I don't know where the 4 4 40 Zeke went. No, that, that's going. He ain't yeah. running 4 4 anymore. Skip, so you want Tony Pollard to get carries or you don't yeah. want him to get touches? Even though, sadly, my team still is not out of the yeah, NFC have least race. They, <laughs> they still have, they're, what are they, two and seven, and they right. still got a shot. They got a shot. They get to play each of the division rivals uh, one more time, right. and if you could win all three, you, you might have a shot. And two of the three at home. Yep, and you're going to have to win maybe one more game somewhere along the line. I thought it was going to be Pittsburgh, but it wasn't. <laughs> My point is, if, if you knew for a fact that, that you weren't going to win the East, to your point, I might put Zeke in mothballs. I, I might just use him very sparingly because if, if you can revive him next year when Dak comes back, 
maybe it's next year is the year. Maybe it's not this year. Man, why, why would you waste the carries man, and the, man, the punishment? That's a, that's a that's an awful expensive suit to just hang up in your closet. Fifteen million bucks a year. <laughs> Jerry Jones would say, uh, "Not on my watch." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? The buck stops but with Skip, me. But when I look at Tony Pollard now, he ended up with nice numbers, but he had four carries on first down did. for a total of one yard. Yep. I now, on the it. season, he's averaging 2.9 yards a carry and one, uh, and on 23 carries. You that, have to get him loose off tackle or right. toss it to him. Right, okay? right. And remember, at Memphis, I watched him quite a bit. He was as much a slot receiver as he was a right. running back. So he can do that also. And they had, But they had the, they had him. They had the uh, the guy that the Rams took. Yeah, I think should... they took the guy from uh, Antonio Edwards, the guy uh, at Washington. Yep. So they had. No, they had weapons, man. Right. So, Skip, I, I think he's a guy that needs to operate out in space. He's not an eye back. He works better. If you look at these college systems, Skip, nobody running back barely seldom is in the eye. He's basically offset. So you're going to have to play him like that, play to his strengths. But like I said, I believe this is a better running team than pass protecting team, and you're going to have to protect him. Now, the defense is playing better. I love what I'm seeing from D-Law. Now, the, 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 the D-Law that I've seen the last three weeks, that, that's, that's a pro bowl. That's an all-pro player. Yep. And... Now you got Diggs is out, Skip. How y'all gonna hold up on the back end? I don't know. Awuzie has got a torn hamstring. Not, he was supposed to be back maybe Sunday, so maybe he's gonna have to come Maybe back with the play. bye week, because you guys get the bye week. Bye week, uh, maybe. And Anthony Brown came back. The other corner has played pretty well. So, But Trevon Diggs got a chance to be a star. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Skip, I, the cow, but the Cowboys just it might not just be a year, Skip. I mean, you still can win, the, like you said, you still can win the division because this is, division is terrible. Yep. And it looks like six wins. Let that sink in. Six wins is probably going to win the NFC East. That's the load that we that that the, the NFL that that division and not the NFL because all the other divisions look like it's going to take 10, 11 wins to win the division. But six wins. I got. And you're going to have a home playoff game, Skip. You proud of that? No, I'm not. And I'm here to say my bottom line to this Zeke discussion is. I believe they could be a little better with Tony Pollard as the every down back. Really? Because you could use him different ways. Because Zeke has a hard time catching. He's, he didn't have great hands. Tony Pollard has really good hands. He needs to be able to fake skip. Zeke can catch the ball if you face him. It's like when he's going away because no. you see him, they throw the ball to him, and it's just like... Whoosh, that, right through that, his hands. Everybody, I mean, you look at guys like Christian McCaffrey, you look at uh, Alvin Kamara, and they make it look easy. They do. But for a running back, catching the ball is not easy. Marshall Falk and some guys can just make it look easy. Yep. Kamara literally, literally could play the slot. Christian there, McCaffrey could play There are ways the to slot. use a Tony Pollard because right. you can just keep flipping it to him the way right. Brady right. would flip it to right. a running back. Or screen. Screen him or toss it to him or get him off tackle where you, you catch them, where, where you get a, any kind of a crease, he right. will hit the crease. Yeah, I, but I am surprised, Skip. I am surprised that Zeke numbers have declined like they have considering he's only 25, considering he's had no major injuries. Yeah, all, all running backs going to have bumps and bruises. Where to, you don't think Derek, uh, Derek Henry's bumping and bruised with, with the load that he's carrying? No sure doubt. he is. No doubt. But I, I'm surprised. I am shocked that Zeke and, has and, not run the ball better this I, year. I want to be clear about this. I am not questioning Zeke's effort. It's not yeah. an effort because he will try so hard, body lean. He will run through a brick wall. Right. But when he runs through it, He's usually just falling forward for four or five yards, and that's his best run of the day. Right. Oh, you ran through the brick wall because there's no real hole right. there, and you couldn't make anybody miss at the line of scrimmage. And that's what that's what caused some of those fumbles because he's trying so hard, trying so hard, and that the ball gets away from his body, and they just punch yep. it out. My only criticism was Orlando Scandrick's criticism, and he knows Zeke very well. Played with him obviously in 2016. He thinks Zeke got a little heavy starting in Cabo San Lucas as he was trained to come back and get his money. And he got his money, and he looked like he brought an extra chin back with him. His, his, his back pocket you know, got heavy. You know, I mean, it's yeah. hard to walk. Well, no, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's it. I don't know. But, again, he doesn't look sleek the way he looked in 2016 or back to 2014 or 2013 when he was running wild. Well, it's kind of hard, Skip. It's kind of hard to change midstream during the yep. season. But if I'm Zeke, what I've done over the last two or three off seasons, I'm getting away from that. I'm going to completely rededicate, train my train, uh, change my training regimen, yep. change my eating schedule, my new, every, I'm, I'm going to do everything different because something is something has happened yep. that's caused Zeke to, for him to have this precipitous fall. No mercy. Tom Brady and the Bucks are looking to recover from their 38 to three loss to the Saints as they. 
travel to play the three and six Panthers this Sunday. Tampa beat Carolina 31-17 in their week two matchup, which also followed a loss to New Orleans. So, Shannon, do you expect Brady and the Bucks to bounce back against Carolina? Skip, he can't play any worse than what he played Sunday night. Um, they'll look at the tape and see what Brady can't, what what he, with the mistakes that he made. Um, but this matchup, right? The matchup, the Carolina Panthers for Tom Brady is a perfect matchup. He won't get it any better than this. Skip, they have nine sacks in nine games. They have 24 hits on the quarterback. That's tailor-made for Tom. They don't rush the passer. He should have all day to pick this team apart. Mm. Now, you know, offensively, uh, they have some nice pieces. I like the receivers. Uh, Christian McCaffrey came back. He nicked his shoulder. He's day-to-day -day with that shoulder injury, but he can run it. He can catch it. Teddy Bridgewater's played really well, Skip. I he mean, he, he, hey, he makes sound decisions. Um, but when I, when, I, when I look at this, the Panthers have lost four games in a row. All of the games have been one-score games. Seven of their nine games uh, have been one-score games. And they better win this because you know what's on the horizon. They get the Rams on Monday night, and they get my homeboy. Mm -hmm. So they better get this game here. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a division opponent, and you basically, you throw, no matter what the records are, Skip, when you come to a division opponent, you throw because they're familiar with you. Throw, throw records out the window, throw a, well, they ain't that good. Okay. Mm. You make that mistake if you want to. But the Panthers are tailor-made for Tom mm. because what his weakness is, is is pass rush. They don't do it. They don't generate a whole lot of that. And the, my homeboy just threw for what? Almost 400 and what? Four touchdowns? So... Oh, so wait a minute. You you were just gushing yesterday about what my homeboy did to the Panthers. Skip, but, but here's the thing, though. Taylor made. Skip, here's the thing. The throws that my homeboy can make, Tom can't even Tom can't even dream of those. If you put him in a deep sleep, he can't dream of doing some of the things that my homeboy can do. So are you suggesting Carolina is going to win this game? Okay, Carolina was ahead in that game late in the third quarter at Kansas City. Why were they ahead? It, it was 33 to 31 when it finished Kansas City and it went to the wire. And believe it or not, Teddy Bridgewater outplayed Patrick Mahomes in his home. Let me ask you a question. If I if if, if Tampa, if my homeboy had Tampa's defense, how many yards do you think he threw for with that defense giving him the ball back like they do, Tom? What defense? Well, how many times they get the ball back on Sunday night? Hold on. It, so, it looked so, like the worst defense in pro football. Now you, hold on. You just told me they got the best two middle linebackers in all the football. I didn't just tell you that. Yeah, you 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 told me that you've been telling me that. I didn't tell you that today. No, no, not today. Oh, so now they're not, they're not any good. So, I told you that last week. Yeah. You got JPP, you got Shaq Barrett, you got Indomitian Sue. And where were they on Sunday night? Skip, they had a bad game. Ask B.A. <laughs> Ask him. So, so in other words, everybody's allowed, no one is allowed to have a bad game except Tom Brady. Because mm. where was Tom Brady on Sunday? Mm. Doing he his best, Jameis. Missing. And you see Jameis, Jameis was eating them dubs on him. He was. Oh, Jameis was. eating them dubs on him. Yeah, Jameis had a long week getting ready for that game because he was spilling secrets like crazy. Oh, yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah. They put him in the hot seat. In the hot seat. <laughs> so isn't it unusual, isn't it something that Carolina happens to be sitting in the two spots in the schedule, the two hot spots where they followed New Orleans both times, yeah. week two yeah. and now week, what are we up to, 10? Week 10. Yeah, week 10. Okay, so Carolina is sitting there as the Buccaneers teeter because this is a north-south. This is like an end-of-the-line game. Yeah. You better win this one, to your point, to, to have any chance at, at becoming the team you want to become. Carolina, like, what schedule maker did yeah. that? You got them all fired up. They come, We got them again after a loss. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> because, as you say, they got their brakes beaten off by Indeed. New Orleans both times, and here we go again, except this one isn't at Tampa Bay. Right. This one's at Carolina. Mm -hmm. You don't think this is a dangerous game? The odds makers say, not so fast. It's not that dangerous because the odds makers have made Tampa Bay a six-point favorite. Right. That's a lot of points. That is. I would not do that. I would not give those points because I think it will go to the wire. Really, the first game, it was their first home game, week two, it went to the wire. It was a close game. It was still 24 to 17 until, <clears throat> excuse me, Leonard Fournette broke a 46 yard run with a minute 48 left right. that made it 31 to right. 17. So it was still just hanging, hanging. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Maybe the Christian McCaffrey injury scared some of the odds makers, but I was surprised that the, 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 the spread was this big, Skip, for the simple fact, given how well Carolina played and how poorly 
Tampa play. So I guess the odd makers are expecting them to have a real big bounce back to make it basically a touchdown. Yep. So there's one man in sports I do not bet against. It's Tom Brady, especially in this situation. On pure pride, raw pride, <clears throat> he will play very well. They're, they're going to approach this game, to me, to your point, much differently than they approached the New Orleans game. I don't know what they were doing, but <laughs> they got it in their mind. They could hit A.B. two or three times with deep balls that would break the game open. Right. Uh, did not happen. In the first interception was A.B. just stopping a route and Tom forcing a ball up into what looked like was about to be double coverage. Yeah. Might have been intercepted if he'd run the right route right. and kept running. But it's Tom saying... No risk it, no biscuit. Right. I'm forcing it yeah. to him. The, the, the previous throw, he'd thrown one into the wind from his in, end zone under duress right. and tried to get the ball 60 yards to A.B. W what's up with this? Yeah, what, you, what are you trying to you, do? You need to be Josh Allen or Mahomes to cut through the okay. air if that wind's blowing like it was. So they're going to have to come with a different approach the way they approached. Tom was 23 at 35, threw for 217 in that week two game. Carolina... It, they know how to play them. They will play them tough. They'll they, play them tight. They keep it close. Skip. Yeah. What, is the, what they do is keep the game close and then try to win it, try to win it late in the end. That's what they did with, with Mahomes. They kept, I mean, they had these long drives, you know, 10, 12 play drives that would pay out, that paid off in the end. So we're keeping Mahomes off the field. Well, that's what they're going to try to do with Brady because they don't generate pass rush. It's, it, I mean, it's hard to beat, Skip, it's hard to be, play defense if you can't get the quarterback on the ground or if you don't at least threaten him. Okay, so this is going to be very simple to me. You, you, all of a sudden, Tom went from Julian Edelman or Buss last year to too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. You have two Pro Bowl receivers from last year. You have the GOAT tight end who'd been on a tear yep. until Sunday night. And now you've added an AB who went for five years dominating this league yep. the way nobody else dominated. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out from jump who are they doubling? Because it's pretty simple math here because you're going to have two receivers who are very good who are going to be single covered. Right. Because they, right. Don't have, they don't have what New Orleans have. They do. They don't have a Jack Rabbit and they no. don't have a Marshawn Lattimore that can take their safety is not. I mean, the safety is okay, but do you believe that safety can deal with Gronk one on one? I, I, don't, I don't think so. And so this is a this matchup for Tom, he won't get any better than this, Skip, because you know what's coming the Rams and that front four. And you got Jalen Ramsey on the back end of that. Mm -hmm. And then you got my homeboy that you're going to have to match his scoring. You are. Because they're going to score. Agree. Now, I, I understand Tampa has a good defense, but boy, hey, you think New Orleans can put points on the board, my homeboy can light you up in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get deep. So I will take the box for five cases. This is where I don't bet against Brady. You want it? You can have Carolina at home. Give me six? No, no. Oh, straight no, up. No, 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 no. I told you it's going to be down no, to the wire. No. Give me the six points. Nope. But, Skip, hold on. I told. I just said it was too many. No, no hold on. Too many. I points. just hold on. I just gave you thirteen. You're sorry, Cowboys. Well, that was your fault. No, 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 Skip. That, well, give me a chance to win my money back. That was the sorry Cowboys against the undefeated Steelers. Skip. This Vegas doesn't work like this. Vegas doesn't win your money, and then when you try to bet back, close the casino. They give you an opportunity to win your bet back. Okay, give me an opportunity to win my case back. You're calling him Teddy KGB. You got Teddy. <laughs> He runs the house, man. It's his house. Can I at least get, just give me the six points? I'm not asking for mm. 13. Just give me the six. By the way, in rounders, Teddy KGB finally lost to Matt Damon. <laughs> and what did he say? Check, 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 check. check. <laughs> That's what Tom is going to do. Check, check, oh, check, 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 check. That's what he's going to do. He's going to be checking all day. Why? To Fournette, to Rojo. Check, check, check. Did you not see, did you not see what uh, mm. Tyreek was doing? Mm. Tyreek was getting deep. Mm. Marcus Roberts are getting deep. They can get deep on them. I, I don't have a Tyreek on this team. Oh, yeah, you do? I got little Scotty Miller. You got A.B.? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think he's Tyreek. No, he can't, he can't, he can't run like Tyreek. No. no, there's only one Tyreek. No mercy. So there were three quarterbacks taken in the first six picks of the NFL draft this year. And so far, it looks like each of them could be a franchise player. Tua is 2-0 after taking over for the Dolphins two weeks ago. Justin Herbert has 17 passing touchdowns to only five interceptions for the Chargers. And the Bengals' number one overall pick, Joe Burrow, is in the top 10 in passing yards for the entire league, not just rookies. Shannon, who would you take moving forward, Tua, Herbert, or Burrow? I mean, just looking at right now in a vacuum, I mean, these three guys, I mean, you say Justin Herbert. 
Uh, Skip, I didn't see this at Oregon. I mean, I knew he was athletic because I saw him run wild on Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl, but I never saw him throw the ball like he's throwing it right now. And I guess that's the hardest thing is that when you project, Skip, you're like, this guy could be really, really well. And that's what they did with Daniel Jones. It's like, well, he's, a, he's throwing the ball well, but who is he throwing to? No, none of these guys from Duke is going to go play in the NFL. And so that you got to factor that in. Say, okay, once you put talent around him, I'm looking at Justin Herbert. Skip, he's second in the league in passing yards behind Russ. He has 17 touchdowns, five interceptions. I did not see this. And I understand, you know, well, we have a high grade on him, but this. There's one thing, Skip, okay, the guy, you know, throwing for 250 yards a game. But second, as a rookie in the league in passing, no, nah, I didn't see this. I think uh, um, Joe Burrow has been unbelievable given the situation. Um, and I would, and I like what I saw with Tua, and I believe he's only going to get better as we move forward. But right now, it says, okay, Shannon, you got one. I'm, I'm going to take, take this kid at, at the Chargers. And moving forward, Skip, do you trust Cincinnati? Do you really trust Cincinnati? Mm. I just hope A. Lynn can turn this thing around, my former teammate, yep. with the Chargers, and continue to grow. But I like Tua. I just think Tua's going to improve. He's going to he's he's uh, uh, he's a little behind where the other guys are because this is only a second start. But Skip, the comparison's going to be there. It's going to be like '83. You got Kelly Marino and Elway. And well, you, get, you hope it's going to be. Well, no, but I'm yeah, saying that, that's going to be yeah. the comparison. Right. But you know, Tony Eason and, and uh, Kenny O'Brien was also in that draft, and then you get 04 where you got Eli, Phillip Rivers, and Big Ben, and so now you have another, tri you know, set. And you, like you said, hopefully they're, they're like this. But the question is, when you look at the 4 draft, Skip, who do we say the best? Because Eli has two Super Bowls with two, two Super Bowl MVPs. Big Ben has two Super Bowls with no MVPs. And Phillip Rivers has a ton of yards and a ton of touchdowns. So mm. ultimately, how are we going to me measure these guys? It's going to be by championships. Mm. Because, and do we believe, I think, Tua has the has the best chance to get the first championship. I don't I don't, I don't see Cincinnati. Mm. Cincinnati and Super Bowl don't even go together. Mm. They did once upon a time. <laughs> yeah, back in the 80s. Kenny Anderson and yep. Boom, mm -hmm. my, my former part at CBS Boom. Yep. <sighs> like you. <laughs> I watched Justin Herbert a lot at Oregon. I didn't remotely see this. I saw him too often in big games in the Pac-12, just come unglued. Skip, not to cut you off, but you remember open, they opened the season. They played in Jerry World. They played Auburn. They did. And I'm like, y'all talking about this guy could possibly be the number one pick in the draft? Nope. No way. He would unravel, big turnovers, big moments, yep. sort of go blind, just didn't seem to see the field. I don't know what it is about pro football that suited him, but this suits him. <laughs> I also think... That's a good football team. Yeah. They, there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle there. They got some weapons. Which is why I couldn't believe they didn't go get Cam. I, I thought this is made for Cam, SoFi Stadium. Right. And I thought Cam could take this team places. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they could go a distance mm -hmm. in the playoffs. But instead, they go sixth overall. They pick Justin Herbert. And it looks like not a good pick. It looks like right. all-time great pick. You got Keenan Allen. You got Hunter yep. Henry. You got yep. the Williams kid. They got Ooh. Eckler. Skip, they got some talent. And they got some not even there right, right. now. Right, but I'm saying they got some talent on the offensive side. Okay, he doesn't have much to show for it yet Sparks in his wins. record because he's one and six. Right. But 17 touchdowns to only five picks. You can live with that. Ugh. Six feet, six inches tall, and he can run. Yeah. So he's averaged five yards a run on 33 carries. That'll work. His QBR is way up at 73, for, and he's losing. He's lost six That'll games, work. and he still has a QBR 73. This should have won Sunday, Skip. He had the guy that got dropped when he they hit the ground. They should have won about four of them. Yeah, they really right? should have. They really okay. should have. I got it. And I hope your man survives, yes. Anthony Lynn. He got to go and get some wins. Okay. I dug in on Joe Burrow before the draft, and I'm still there. I would still take him long-term over Justin Herbert. And it's because his degree of difficulty is so high. It's not a good football team. In fact, it's been a divided football team, Carlos Dunlap. Somebody's always un unhappy and Everybody's wants out, always. right? Everybody <laughs> wants out. Yep. And yet he's kept them together enough to go 2-5-1. and one. He's 67% of his passes. He's 11 touchdowns to only five interceptions. And he's got athletic ability because yeah. he was a good high school basketball player. And at 6-4, he can run. Yeah. He can escape. But what I like the most is his mental and physical toughness under siege without much protection is 
spectacular. And that's what concerns me, Skip, is that he's taking some punishment. He, he is getting He's taking hits LBO. and he's taking sacks. Yep. So that's what concerns me about him long term. How much of that is he going to be able to withstand? They got to get him some protection. Yep. He's got swagger. He's got competitive fire. And he's got accuracy. You can't teach it or coach it, but he is deadly accurate. Mm -hmm. We saw him go on the greatest run through the, the college, sort of the, the second half of the college season. Oh, yeah. We've ever seen anybody be yeah. on, including Kyler and Baker yeah. before him. Yeah, at, no, at no quarterback has ever had a season like this. No, never. <laughs> and he has done even better than I thought he could for a really bad football team. Mm -hmm. And to your point, I, I hope he just doesn't get flat out hurt, hurt right. where, where he just can't go anymore. But if if they do have another low pick and, and they can begin to build around him and get him some protection and some more weapons, boy, I, I just love how he's made. Yeah. I love his I, I, I love his makeup as much as his physical ability. Because you look at Justin Herbert in college in the pack in the pack ten uh, pack ten, pack twelve, well, whatever you call it. They they throw the ball a bunch. He averaged two hundred and forty eight yards past them a game. You look at Joe Burrow, he averaged 378. Tua averaged 315. So you expect these guys to be able to throw the ball, but 248 in college is nothing. Mm -mm. I mean, he, they're like, you threw for 248 a game in college? Where you play? Yeah, who are you talking <laughs> about? Are these guys like yeah, 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 last year, Justin Herbert averaged 248. Oh, yeah, yeah in last college. year. I yeah, know, I got yeah. it. Yeah, and I'm like, if you, Skip, you say you threw for 248, they're like, would y'all run the wishbone? I know. Now he's 307, <laughs> yes. which ranks Second third. Second behind Ross. Yeah, well, it's, it's third most per game, yes. but his total yards yes. are behind Russ. I got it. Joe Burrow's averaging 284 a game, which is really good right. for a bad football team. Yes. So I would stick Burrow, Herbert, Tua. Tua did impress me at Arizona. Uh, doesn't exactly have a rifle. No. Uh, it's a soft arm. It's like soft ice cream, but he's accurate. That's all, you like that soft serve? Mm -hmm. Yep. You know who served more uh, ice cream than anybody? Mm -hmm. Dairy Queen and McDonald's. That is but true. the McDonald's machine is already broke, always broke, so they go to Dairy Queen. Is that what they The mean? most ice cream, soft serve. Really? Yeah, I love them soft serve. Yep. I DQ. used to when I was a little kid. <laughs> They dip that thing in that truck. Oh, it freezing. Oh. Oh. It's the best. Yeah. Don't do it anymore. Well, you don't do no. it. Uh -uh. No, I don't do dairy either, Skip. Uh -uh. I can't do it. it. Sorry. Makes me congested. Does it? Yeah. Uh, it just would make me fat. I don't want to get fat. <laughs> oh, man, Skip. Yeah. If you got to enjoy yourself, man, mm. live a little bit. I, I do frozen yogurt. It, it works. Uh. It, it's, it's almost like soft ice cream. Mm, yeah, yo, you guys are talking to the biggest Dairy Queen fan around. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. my gosh, as a kid, Ooh. I would still go there every day if there was a Dairy Queen close by, <laughs> just so y'all know. I'm not too concerned. I'm just going to work it off another day. And for the record, <laughs> I'm glad that you guys are finally on the Justin train. I was telling you to expect great things. I just want to remind everyone. No mercy. The Bucks are still licking their wounds after their 38-3 loss to the Saints. And yesterday, Bruce Arians explained the loss in a way that may have included a few shots at his quarterback, Tom Brady. Arians described one of Brady's three interceptions as, quote, just a poor throw. And then explained the lack of Mike Evans' production by saying Mike was open a bunch in that ball game. He didn't get targeted. That was all. Mike was open. Former All-Pro quarterback Antonio Camardi joining us this morning. Oh, Antonio, was Sunday night just a bad night, or was it a sign of things to come for Brady and the Bucks? No, I just think it was a bad night. I mean, you, you have those games that you go into, uh, you think you have a great week of practice, and you just have one of those bad nights. And I think that's what, that's what you saw here. Um, you just, the offense couldn't get going. I think they got away from the run. Uh, they didn't do the things that it was they was doing when they was running the ball. They try to you know show out for the you know with Gronk having Antonio Brown, uh, Godwin, and also um, uh, Mike Evans out there you know trying to spread the ball around. But you know the offense is ran uh, basically from the running game to the passing game, and I don't think they did that at all. I agree. I think it was it was a bad game, but I, I think the biggest thing is is that what teams are seeing like look. If we don't have a front like the Saints, and there are very few teams in the NFC that does, uh, the Rams can pressure the quarterback with four. The Saints can pressure the quarterback with four and then, you know, not compromise their back end. But everybody else is probably going to have to sacrifice something. But the thing moving forward, the teams are going to see that, you know what, the chance for us to beat this team is that we got to pressure Tom Brady. And we might have to give up a big play. But we got to get Tom Brady. We got to make him uncomfortable. And if we can make him uncomfortable early, that might serve us well later. He might miss a throw or two late. 
But if we let him get in rhythm early, well, there's no chance of us knocking him off rhythm late. So I think that was the thing that the Saints shown. The Saints says, look, we can just, just go get pressure. And they, they, but they got, like I said, they got Jack Rabbit and they got Marshawn Lattimore that can put hands. They got those guys that work on the farm. And if you're from Louisiana, you know what the farm is. They got those guys that says, oh, Mike Evans, you ain't getting it today. A.B., we know you just got back. Jack Rabbit said, we're not having it. And then Chris Godwin said, yeah, you take your third corner. But he's dealing with a broken index thing. And I don't really know how well you're going to be able to catch consistently with a yes. broken hand and you trying to catch body catch it. Because you catch with, you know, you catch with your eyes, but that, that ball hitting that hand, a broken finger, that hurt. Mm. <laughs> I, had, I had, I wrote thumb guards. So I know when you got an injured, uh, index, uh, a digit, it hurts to catch the ball. Mm. I agree yeah. with you, Crow. I think it was a bad night. But B.A. is going to have to make a decision, Crow. Is he's going to let Tom Brady run his offense that he ran in New England because he's not it's not conducive to run what B.A. wants to run, which is get chunk plays down the field. That's not conducive. You saw what happened Sunday. Yeah. They tried to get chunk plays down the field with no running game, and you set Tom Brady up for failure. Let him do what he does really well, which is pick you apart. He's a short fisherman. He ain't a deep sea fisherman anymore. He never was. But let him take the back in the flat. Let him take the check down. Let him take Gronk over the middle. Let him work the middle stuff. All that, you know, no risk it, no biscuit, that ain't for Tom. Mm. Yeah. So it sounds like you've come around on the Buccaneers because yesterday you were all doom and gloom. They're done, man. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't say they're done. No, no. Mm. There's only a handful of teams that can do to them what the Saints do did. And they're both probably going to be in the playoffs. That's the Rams and that's the Saints that can rush for and not compromise and play man coverage. Jalen Ramsey can play man coverage. Mm. I like the, I like, we'll find out because they got the what? They got the Rams in two weeks on a Monday night. So we'll find out how that matchup could possibly materialize because it could happen again in the playoffs. Mm. So, Crow, back to What's bad night. Mm -hmm. I thought it was one of the two or three worst games of Tom Brady's career. I also think it was a recipe for disaster. They were on a short week coming off Monday night football away, had to travel home, condensed week. Antonio Brown joins them. We, we know how big his personality is, how big his presence is. He can be a disruptor. I'm not saying he was disrupting the team, but just by being there, it's disrupting to a team that was already six and two and looked like it was on a roll. And all of a sudden, after two practices, you throw Antonio into a mix that was working. And you had two guys who made the Pro Bowl last year. You've added the GOAT tight end and Gronk, who'd been on a recent roll. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you play Antonio Brown 39 snaps. And you try to force feed him five targets. And you spread the ball great. You, you, you threw six to Gronk. You threw six to Mike Evans. You threw six to Godwin. You even threw six to Fournette. On, on your check downs out of the backfield. So the ball got spread. It just didn't get caught. And <laughs> it was a disaster from start to finish. Tom Brady got hurt on the first snap of the night. He got hit, hit not yeah. hurt. He got, he got slapped in the face. And it was almost like it, this is who we are, that we're going to be there. We're going to be in your face. That was Cam Jordan, Cam who, Jordan. who didn't have much of a yeah, game after Cam. that. But all of a sudden, that Trey uh, Henry's coming from everywhere. And, my God, they were all over Brady. He had the second highest rush rate of the week. So, so he was under fire as uh, 56% of the night. But, again, I'm not making an excuse, but, but I'm giving him a little bit of break because, man, if you're going to try to force Antonio into that mix you, and, and you don't have as much time to, to speed read as you used to, it's, it's going to be chaos for you. Hey, hey, Crow, before you go, yeah, but I feel like this, though. Go ahead. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Crow. Go ahead. Make your point. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. This is my thing, though. This is what I'm talking about. But you can't say he tried to, to force Antonio Brown into it. The game plan was playing Antonio Brown for 10 to 31 plays. He ended up playing like 39 plays. You got to think about this. He was trying to force feed Grunk more so than he was trying to force feed Antonio Brown. He had Antonio Brown open on the first third down. Who he tried to throw it to? Who had great coverage? He tried to throw it to Grunk. Antonio Brown wide open. He's going against a linebacker. Who's checking Antonio Brown coming out in the backfield? He's missing his reads. The reads that he's, he needs to make, that's what Tom, Tom Brady's doing. He's missing his mismatches and something that he did in New England very well. He took advantage of the mismatch, and he's not doing that. And you can see that. He's trying to force feed the ball to guys that's not open and not throwing to what he has mismatch-wise. Agreed.
And, and when you, as Skip said, when he did a great job of spreading the ball around, that's not what Mike Evans is used to. Nope. Mike Evans is not used to having the ball spread around. He used to getting 10. To, he's like, hold on. Jacoby Agreed. Myers got 14 targets last night, and you mean to tell me you gave me six, and I'm supposed to be happy with that? And I told you the other day, Crow, I said, it's just a matter of time. I said, what they tried to do is that because they're not uh, uh, targeting Mike Evans like they normally would, they get down into the one or two yard line, they throw him a fade, he get a touchdown, but well, that's going to keep him happy. But it's only a matter of time. You know how these big time receivers, they want won't they 10 to 14 targets per game because they see all these other guys getting these targets. They watch it, um, Devontae Adams. They watch it, Stephon Diggs. They watch it, all these guys. They're like, wait a minute. We supposed to have to go. He's supposed to be able to figure this out, how to get me my 12 targets mm -hmm. and keep, I ain't worried about everybody else. Get me my 12 and we gonna win. That's, that's true. <laughs> but you gotta think about this. Bruce Aarons don't care about your targets. Bruce Aarons don't care nothing about that. Being with him in Arizona, he didn't care about Larry Fitzgerald getting 25 catches or 25 targets a game. He didn't care about none of that. All thing Bruce Aarons cared about was winning the game. And if he can spread the ball around and get the guys that he need to get the ball to win the game, that's what he's going to do. Mm. Yeah, he's going to spread it around. But Fitz got the – there's a reason why Fitz is breaking in on 1,400 catches. Fitz was never devoid of uh, uh, catches in Arizona. He got his catches, but if you look at his offense, you remember, Crow, that offense is about pushing the ball down the field. Down the field. And if you don't push the ball down the field, he's going to be upset. I think that's what he's mainly upset about with, with, with Brady more than anything. Yeah, Brady didn't play well, and that's okay. I mean, what great quarterback hasn't had a game or two in a season in which he played awful? but it's his inability to consistently push the ball down the field. They criticized Jameis, but Jameis was doing exactly what B.A. wanted him to do, which was push the ball down the field. I mean, that's very true, but who, who are you going to push the ball down the field with? <laughs> you don't have no speed, guys. But, See, Bruce, Aaron, Bruce Aaron's offense was built on having speed from John Smoke Brown to having Antonio Brown, Emmanuel Sanders, Mike Wallace, and all those guys down the field. You was able to push the ball down the field. Who are you gonna push it down the field? Antonio Hall. Uh, jump balls. Mike Evans. I mean, you, first of all, Mike Evans used to go in deep. They're gonna throw him jump balls. Mike is a 50. He wanna be a 50 50 guy. But that's not how Tom is wired. You know Tom is not gonna just put it. Oh, that's Mike Evans. Let me throw the ball 55 yards down the field and let Mike jump up and catch it. Jameis would put it up. <laughs> Jameis, oh, you want it, Mike? <laughs> I'm gonna put I'll throw it to you. Definitely. He's definitely gonna throw it up to you. So, Crow. Having played for Bruce Arians, having been around him in Arizona, are, are you at all surprised that he has been publicly critical of Tom Brady after each of their three losses? No, not, not at all. <laughs> I saw it in Arizona with Carson Palmer. <laughs> he, he, but, he, he, but, he, but, you know, that's, that comes with uh, a lot of territory with uh, Coach Arians, man. He, he's a guy that expects a lot of his guys. And the one thing that uh, Bruce Aaron, Coach Arians always said was, if you're a five-star player, you need to play like a five-star player. No matter what the conditions are, I need my blue chip players to play the way they're supposed to play. Mm -hmm. And that's what he expects out of them. You want to call him the GOAT? Well, he got to have a GOAT night every single night. So that's, that's the terms that he go by. Because if you think about it, when he talks about it, he's like, well, Tom practiced really well, Skip. He made those three. He always goes back to that. And that's what, remember the first game, he's like, well, I'm surprised that he missed that because he was playing, yeah. he threw the ball so well in practice. And he's like, okay, I expect practice to correlate to you going on the field mm -hmm. and doing exactly what you did in practice, doing that in the game. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised. And that was my concern with, with Skip and I. I said, well, Skip, when he's openly critical of Tom Brady, how is Brady going to handle that? Because it's coming. It's going to come, and that's that's who he is. That's who he's always been. Mm. Yes. Well, for the record, I'm not surprised, <laughs> but I am offended by it because who the hell is B.A. to criticize Tom Brady publicly? That's all I got to ask. Hey, B.A. going to be him. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> Thomas him. Edward Jameis Winston Brady Sr., because he turned them all over like Jameis. Not any, any crew. For one uh, night. No, nah, no, nah, nah, not like Jameis. No, no. no. That is not that, his name, that's, that's Shannon. That's your boy Carson Wentz. <laughs> uh, don't do that. Don't Thank do you. That, bro. Touché. Bro, don't do that. Don't Bingo. do that. No mercy. A full slate of college football kicks off Saturday on Fox as TCU takes on West Virginia at noon Eastern. Then it's Pac-12 action as 20th ranked USC battles Arizona, followed by number 11 Oregon squaring off with Washington State. I'll be in Tucson for that one and looking forward to the sunshine this week. Ah, uh, the cat.
Cowboys maybe want a little sunshine as well. They lost again Sunday, but this time they did keep it close throughout before the undefeated Steelers snuck away with a victory. Dallas is now 2-7 and seven on the season as they enter their bye week, while Philadelphia is at 3-4-1. However, after playing the Giants this week, the Eagles have a tough stretch against Cleveland, Seattle, Green Bay, New Orleans, and Arizona before playing Dallas again. Antonio Camardi is still with us. So, Crow, from what you saw Sunday against Pittsburgh, what shot do you give the Cowboys to win the NFC East? <sighs> All I'm going to say is they are who we thought they were. <laughs> 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 I mean, when you look at that team, um, I, mean, I think Gilbert did a, a heck of a job of, of managing the game. Uh, I think it was 21 for 38 for 243. Uh, through a touchdown and through an interception. But I think, you know, overall, uh, he gave them a better chance at winning. Hopefully, he moves forward. But I just don't see the Cowboys winning that division uh, just by what they showed. And you was up 19-3 to and give up that score and up losing 24-19. It just, they just showed that they can't finish a game, and they don't know how to still. They're young. They're still trying to get through on, but it's having a chance at winning this division at all. You know what, Skip, before I go into making my point, I was watching those those cut up that we were showing leading in. I see why Z can't get no yards. Skip, you see that? There's a guy in his face <laughs> like that. Like he gets I'm handed gonna... the ball and he, he it's like he gets handed a defender and the ball. I'm like, gee, yeah. Zeke, yeah. I'm sorry. No, yeah. Tony Pollard should not get any more carries. They should block for the guy that's carrying the ball to begin with, whomever the running back is. Mm. But look. Skip, this is a bad division. Crow, this is a bad division. Six yeah. wins is going to win this division. I, 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 and I, I can assure you, the NFL is like, what have we gotten ourselves into? Because the division winner must get a playoff spot and he gets a home game. Now, you know, in Dallas' situation, Dallas had 30,000 fans in the game. So if you notice, Skip, every week it went from 12 to 15 to 20, now we're at 30. Probably by the end of the season, it's going to be at 50,000 fans in, in Jerry World. Mm -hmm. Because this is a bad division, the Eagles are 3 4 and 1. They're a game and a half ahead of the uh, next opponent, which is Washington, Dallas. Well, yeah, you're Dallas uh, and the Giants. Skip, ain't no, no one in this division is going on a three game win streak. So it's going to come down to probably the last two weeks of the season where somebody wins to get the, the, uh, the Eagles to get to six. Well, so what that would be? Six, eight, and one. And you win, the, you win the division at 6 8 and 1. But nobody's going on a winning streak. You look at who they have on their remaining schedule, you're like, well, they got every. Well, consider you only won three games. Everybody's going to be tough. So consider you only won two games. Everybody's going to look like the Kansas City Chiefs till you consider you've only won two games. So because they're in a bad division, yes, they still have a chance to win this division. And go, whoever wins this division, I don't see them winning a playoff mm. game. They're getting blown out. Mm. And by the way, Crow, the reason my Dallas Cowboys couldn't finish that that win against Pittsburgh the other day is because the refs finished. Don't do that. Don't do that. The refs finished oh. the game with three of the worst calls I've seen in a long time. Two for sure that cost Dallas the game. So Shannon could come in and cowboy hate. He could Brady hate and cowboy hate. He was in his glory yesterday. Look, I woke up this morning thinking I was going to come in here and make the case that my Cowboys will still win this division. Then we just got word an hour or so ago, Trevon Diggs, who's been a revelation at cornerback, a real playmaker, real star potential, is gone for four to six weeks with a broken foot. Well, what else can go wrong? It's snake bitten. It feels like it's not meant to be. But the reason I still think they have a long shot chance is the defense has sprung back to life when you least expected it. So Jerry did one good thing. He got rid of six free agent malcontents on defense who were malcontents for the right reasons because they all rejected Mike Nolan's system, and I think they should have. I don't think it was working. But Jerry said, well, because it's not working, I'm not going to fire Mike Nolan. I'm going to fire all of you. <laughs> so he six guys that he signed as pretty good to very good free agents, he just whacked them all. They're mm -hmm. all gone. And all of a sudden, Leighton Van Der Esch came back from injury, and he can do one thing. He can run to the run. Mm -hmm. He will stop the run. They held Pittsburgh to 46 yards rushing after they were giving up 300 yards to Cleveland and what was it? 240 to, to Arizona. 240. And even the Washington, Washington football team got 200 <laughs> yards rushing, and Pittsburgh got only 46. Van Der Esch played. Jalen Smith was flying around. Sometimes he's in the wrong place, wrong time. 
But D-Law has become a force again. Yep. Alden Smith can be a force. And Randy Gregory can fly off the edge. And he's sort of coming back to, to that 2018 life where he had six sacks. So I kind of like my defense. Uh, I, I kind of like Andy Dalton coming back as, as well as Garrett Gilmer played. I still think Andy Dalton, having made three Pro Bowls in his career, could be a better solution at, at quarterback. Zach Martin has re-solidified the offensive line. At least it's credible now. Right. And uh, Tony prepared. Pollard, I, I, don't, I, I like him more than I like Zeke right now because he has a little wiggle and a little burst to him. So, again... Could I make a case that they could beat all three division foes left on the schedule? Yeah. They, they could. Could they win one other game? Maybe. And then they'd get blown off their, <laughs> off their home field in a playoff game. So that's that would be the... Yeah. You, uh, yeah. Mm. It's not looking good, though. Mm. It's looking bad. <laughs> it's looking bad. It's just, you know, when you, like I say, when Shannon talking, when you show the highlights, the offensive line looked terrible. I mean, we say Zach Murray can come in and help so uh, solidify everything with trying to shut the offensive line, but it's not helping. You still got the left, you got the guards, you got the tackles that still is not blocking well. And honestly, if you bring Andy Dalton back, I don't think the offense is going to be as springy as it was with Gilbert because Gilbert can actually move in and out of the pocket, extend plays with his legs, and actually just go out and just throw the ball where he needs to be, uh, where he needs to go. And I mean, and he can make plays with his legs coming down the field. He's made those, and you saw that on Sunday. But uh, I don't see him. Uh, when is the business skill? I'm, so I'm sorry. I, I will admit to you, as much as I respect Andy Dalton, there's a little part of me that's getting bigger and bigger. I, it's like Gary yeah, Gilbert I, was I, pretty good. I would tell good. the way you was talking. You yeah. was talking about you won't, like you won't Gilbert in there. Huh. Well, once upon a time, I saw Jimmy Johnson <laughs> ride Steve Berline down the stretch and into the playoffs. And Steve in Berline w- went to Chicago and beat Ditka in Chicago. And then they went to Detroit, Detroit. and they got their doors blown off <laughs> by Barry Sanders and company. But the point was that Troy was healthy. Troy Aikman came right. back and was healthy for the last four or five games. And Jimmy said, no, I'm riding with the hot hand, Steve Burlock. Well, we saw that. We saw that with Phil Simmons and Jeff Hostel. Yep, Coach true. Parcell yeah. stuck with uh, Jeff Hostel. We saw yeah. that with Tom Brady and Drew Bledsoe. And Drew. <laughs> Coach Belichick he said, did. nah, I'm right. I'm sorry, okay. bro. All right. I didn't think Garrett Gilbert was any good because he was a disaster at Texas, but, but I, I'm with Crook. He surprised me. He was moving and he was grooving. I mean, let, was, that, let that sink in for a second, Crow. The Cowboys uh, are so bad. They well, He wanted them to play a guy that they just signed yesterday. Mm, okay, hey, three days ago. Mm. Hey, I'm with it too. Let him play. But I don't know. I'm you want to take, you want Trevor play. Lawrence or you want to win ball? You want to go to the playoffs? Which one you want, Skip? Because one minute you want them to take, the next minute you say they can win the division. What you I, want? I don't want Trevor Lawrence. I don't need Trevor. I got Dak Prescott. Uh, I'm good. You're not good with oh, Dak you, Prescott. Oh, oh so, you, so you out on the Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes? Well, uh, I think it might be the Justin Fields sweepstakes, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I mean, a lot of people say that it's close. Yep, it's yeah. very close. I'll still it's take Dak. Close. I'm good. Okay. Yep. All right, Antonio, always a pleasure. Thank you for stopping by, joining us today. We will check in soon. No mercy. Cam Newton had 274 passing yards to go with two rushing touchdowns in the Patriots' 30-27 win over the Jets. Cam led New England on three scoring drives in the fourth quarter, including the final one with 47 seconds remaining to get in position for the game-winning field goal. When asked by reporters afterward what he credited the better play to, Newton was pretty blunt, saying, quote, I'm getting tired of sucking. Simple. As a competitor, you know what your standard is. Taking pride in your way, that's what it comes down to. Shannon, put that quote. Give Cam a letter grade for last night. If I gave him an A for the simple fact, he found a way to win the ball game. Things weren't always going his way, but he found a way to keep fighting. He made plays when he had to make the plays, uh, and he didn't turn the football over. That's what was costing him. I don't care how well you play defense. It's hard to, you know, the old saying, Skip, if you're in in the the fitness industry, you can't overcome a bad diet. Well, no matter how well your defense plays, you can't overcome turnovers. Mm -hmm. And if your quarterback keeps putting the ball in harm's way and he's not scoring, Skip, he wasn't scoring either. Mm -hmm. With the exception of the Buffalo game, he had zero touchdown throwing and like five, six, seven turnovers. Well, you can't overcome that. Last night, he took care of the football. They got the one turnover, which was the difference in the ball game. And Cam found a way to win the ball game. So I gave him an A because I like the way he played. I still I don't care what Cam says. And Cam, he's not going to make any excuses. But Cam is not 100% physically healthy. 
you can look at the way Cam is moving. That's not Cam Newton. Cam Newton all of a sudden just didn't age five years in six months. Cam Newton's not healthy. When Cam is healthy, you'll see a better Cam, and he might not even get healthy this year. But once this offseason comes into effect and he's able to train, you will see a better Cam Newton. But I gave him an A for last night because I love what I saw. He found a way to win, even though they didn't have their best stuff last mm. night. I will give Cam an A- minus for his effort last night, only because... With the Jets, the degree of difficulty is so <laughs> low that I can't give anybody an A. I don't care if you had the most spectacular game ever. You you should have a good game. But you know, G. Will going to bring game. that pressure skip. Now, he kept pressure on him. Did he really? <laughs> I don't know. What did he have to pressure with? Who's left on defense of any note? Nobody. You know, it's, it's a bunch of rookies and cast-offs. In fact, Greg Williams boasts about, you know, nobody on this team was drafted high at all, left on the defense, right. I mean. Except Quinny, yeah. Quinny Williams. Yeah. And w was he out there last night? I, th I thought oh. he was hurt. Yeah, he might have. I think he was hurt. The point is, I loved what Cam did in the second half because I have never seen such ball control as I saw in the second half last night, especially in the fourth quarter. New England held the ball 14 minutes to one minute <laughs> for Flacco. I, I've never heard anything I've like that. I've never heard that before. 22 minutes to eight minutes for the whole second half. Cam was six of nine on third down. That'll work. Yep. And they ran 47 plays in the second half to only 15 for Flacco. Well, that was good because the best thing you did, Cam Newton, was to keep Joe Flacco, <laughs> who had gone from Joe Fluco to playoff Flacco, you kept him on the sideline especially in the fourth quarter, you just kept him out of the game. He took himself out of the game with, with one big bad interception. Right. That he just went for the home run, went for the quote-unquote kill shot, and J.C. Jackson caught it instead of his man, so Mim. Denzel Mims. Yeah. So the point is, to, to be able to control the ball like that, you, you can't make one mistake. And he didn't make any mistakes Correct. after he had taken so much criticism for huge late mistakes. Mm -hmm. So for him not to make any mistakes was highly impressive to me. I'll still go A min minus because it's the 0 and 8 Jets. Right. And yet, in the end, I, I thought he played very well. With He had a couple of bouts of inaccuracy yes. that cost him a little bit. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it still took a 51-yard walk-off field goal to to for them to escape the Jets at 0-8. Had he, had, he <coughs> Skip, had he not won the ball game, I would have gave him a B. But because he was able to get them in position to he kick did. that field goal, I gave, I, I, get, I rounded up and ended up giving them an A. But like you said, it is the Jets. And I, I think the Jets told Flacco, you messing up our Trevor Lawrence deal. So uh, you need to get in here and do what, you know, what you've been doing for the last three to four years. Because mm -hmm. let's be real, Skip, all the way 1,000. Joe Flacco hadn't been good since that Super Bowl run. So after he got paid, Joe Flacco was never, ever any – I mean, Joe Flacco was really basically a, a, a playoff player. In the regular season, he's never been to a Pro Bowl. He's nope. never made an All-Pro. He's never, never led the league in passing yards or completion percentage or anything like that. He's been very average, and that's being kind. But since he got that big payday skip, he would have been terrible. Yeah, but he got it because he earned it with his playoff. Playoffs. It, it was unbelievable. He, he's a – He's a playoff Hall of Famer. When you when you look at what, he, especially Skip, on the road, he's beaten Tom Brady twice in his building in the playoffs. He beat Peyton Manning. He did. In the playoffs. With a hail flat. Yeah, so, so he's a different player than in the, in the playoffs than he was in the regular season. But he, he I mean, won the Super Bowl. He, he was the MVP. That's what I'm saying. But he had Ray Lewis and company. That helps. Right. You know, yeah, but he so, was the MVP. So, so and he yeah. turned back into playoff Flacco last night. And I thought they were going to lose, and Cam just played keep away enough in the third and especially fourth quarter. Skip, there's not the a game. whole lot of guys that can make that throw. That he made the Crowder in the corner of the end zone for 20 yards. Skip, there's not a whole mm -hmm. lot of guys that can make that throw. Agreed. And the thing, what I didn't realize until watching, I said, like, hold on. The reason why he was throwing to Perriman, he had a relationship. Perriman was in Baltimore. Right, he was. And so you see the, the connection, that the familiarity that they had with one another. And uh, Perriman, if he could just ever stay healthy, his problem was he just can't stay healthy long enough. He got Nick, came back in, and ended up catching the touchdown. Mm -hmm. But I gave him a, it's something he can build on. Cam just has to take care of the football. Because now, Skip, he doesn't have a defense that's good enough to overcome his mistakes. Mm -hmm. So he, they ran, I mean, 41 rushing attempts, 159. 
You can live with that ball control, as you mentioned, mm. but the defense isn't good enough to overcome his mistakes. And yet the irony was Cam had a QBR of 90 last night. Flacco had a 97, scale of 0 to 100. And it felt like Flacco just might have made himself some money last night oh, he'll be on the back big up. stage. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. Because he, he, somebody's going to take yeah. the shot at that, yeah. right? He still have arm talent, Skip, but yeah. he's going to make the mistake. He's coming off really serious neck right. surgery, right? right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that Cam made himself any money last night as far as long-term right. projection sort of money. But he played well enough for them to win a game that they would have been humiliated to lose. I just think the thing, Skip, as you start to age and you play that position, and when you won an MVP, can you accept being a backup? That's going to be the question that Cam's going to have to ask himself. Flacco's clearly accepted the role of being a backup. He knows that's what he's going to be. He's going to be a backup now, Skip. He's, he's going to fall into the role of a Ryan Fitzpatrick or Brian Hoyer. You're going to be able to mentor a young player along. Can, could Cam see himself as that? I, I don't see that. But is he the basically starter or nothing? Mm. Is he the long-term solution for Bill Belichick? I, I'm still not I, I'm not that sold on yet. that either. I'm not sold on that either. Mm. But that's the last. All he wants to do is stay healthy and keep, and, and keep playing well. And then you can live with whatever transpires after that. No mercy. Thursday, division rivals square off as the Colts and Titans battle for first place in the AFC South. It all starts at 7.30 Eastern on Fox, NFL Network, and streaming on Prime Video. All right, listen up, guys. A former Patriots exec said yesterday that he thinks Tom Brady misses the structure and consistency that he got from playing in New England for 19 seasons. He went on to say that everything from the weekly preparation to the knowledge of what his new coaches are thinking in all game situations are big things Brady needs to adjust to. So, Shannon, how much does Brady miss Belichick? He misses, the, I don't know if he necessarily misses Belichick, Skip, but he misses the structure, the discipline that Coach Belichick provided. He misses not being criticized publicly <laughs> in, in the media, like, uh, unlike Coach Belichick would, wouldn't and didn't do anything like that. Now, did he criticize Brady in front of the teams or show plays in which Brady messed up? Sure, absolutely. But that's something entirely different than officer offering a, a critique or a harsh critique in the public's view. I believe he misses that, Skip. He misses the structure. He misses the discipline of not getting penalties, of not jumping off sides, of not doing certain things that cost your team wins. He's used to being in situations where the other teams made those mistakes that cost them a victory, as opposed to being on a team that's doing those things that's costing us victory. So I believe there are aspects. Does he miss the person, Coach Belichick, Absolutely not. Does he miss the structure and the discipline that Coach Belichick provided? Absolutely. But I'm sure there are some things that he likes about being uh, being in Tampa. Mm. Maybe it's the weather, Skip. Maybe uh, 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 you know. Maybe the uh, maybe the way they practice is a little different, and you get more time off. I don't know, but I know he misses structure. Mm. When you've been, Skip, it's kind of like the military. When you've been in the military for his, for an extended period, let's imagine Tom Brady was in the military for 20 years. When you're in the military for 20 years. Your bed is made up every morning. Certain things are put in certain... My grandfather believed in that. He was in the military. Mm -hmm. So he structured everything mm -hmm. was about discipline. Yep. That's what Tom had for 20 years. You just can't un you just can't turn that off, Skip. Yep. And they're asking Brady to... Look, Brady, it's a new sheriff in town. Guys jumping outside. They're like, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. Guys getting penalties, dumb penalties. You're like, what? And you're not going to say anything about that? Because Coach Belichick would have missed... If an offensive lineman had done what that lineman did in Chicago, Coach Belichick would have made him at midfield and mm -hmm. put his foot in his butt. Yep. But he would have known because Coach Belichick has gone through that situation of football. Mm -hmm. In situations like this, we can't afford to have that happen. So I'm sure there are things that Coach that uh, Tom Brady misses about New England. Mm -hmm. I'm just not so sure it's Coach mm -hmm. Belichick. So I'll go one level deeper here. I definitely think Tom Brady misses Bill Belichick, the head coach. Mm -hmm. He does not miss Bill, the general manager. Or the person, huh? Or the, or the, <laughs> but, but I'm talking about the yeah. team builder. Yes. Oh, no. The, the personnel director. Right. Because Bill is in charge of the whole show, mm -hmm. top to bottom. Right. And he slowly but surely left the cupboard bearer yeah. and bearer. That happened on his watch. And at times it felt, as I told you, that word I sort of created, it felt a little sabotage -y. I didn't think he wanted Tom to succeed because he wanted the bulk of the credit. Mm -hmm. So 
he's getting more and more exposed as a team builder because last night I'm feeling sorry for for poor Cam Newton. He's throwing to an undrafted kid out of North Carolina State who played quarterback <laughs> in college. And he's also throwing and handing to little Gunnar Olszewski, yeah. right? Yeah. Out of Bemidji, whatever it's Bemidji called. State. State, she knows. State, and up upstate Minnesota, Minnesota, right? Four hours north. Four hours of, north, of says Minneapolis. Jenny Taft. In Canada, basically. Okay. I used and, to have a cabin up there. And remember, Come on, guys. Gunner was cut in and out until they got so desperate at receiver. There's no Edelman now. There's no Nikhil Harry. That they brought back little Gunner. Mm -hmm. And and they were running jet sweeps like crazy right. to little Gunner last night. He's not bad. But it, but again. It, Demir Bird had nine targets. He had nine targets. And he's he's turning Jacoby Myers into a star, right? <laughs> he is. What do you have, 169? So that's all you got. And trust me, Tom's watching the game. Just he's feeling for Cam. He says, I know. I, I know how that feels. Yeah. I was trying to overcome that last right. year. The offensive line's not bad. I think it's a it, it's pretty much, I think it's on par with what Tom has right. worked with in Tampa. Right. But the rest of it, right. the skill position, the weapons, it's not even close. No, it's not. Okay. So what he's missing now, especially today, after that salvo from Bruce Arians yesterday directed at Brady, he's he's missing, as you say, structure. He He's missing credibility because one thing about Belichick is he's always coaching. He it, It's it's 24-7. He, he is no stone left unturned right. before a game where every little T is crossed and I is dotted, where your preparation is supreme, where where when you step on the field two hours before the game, you know it is done. What, whatever you could do to get as right as you could get, it, it is done. And with Bruce Arians, I don't think it feels done to Tom. I think the biggest thing that Tom Brady misses about Coach Belichick is calm. You lose, the sky isn't falling. Yep. It almost seems like every time you lose with, with B.A. Skip, the sky is falling. Oh, we did this, and we had this guy. Coach Belichick say, hey, we lost. We got to do everything better. We got to play better. We got to coach better. We got to tackle better. We got to do everything better. Okay. It's not one specific thing. What, what happened thing. back in 2014 14. on that Monday night? Right. What was it, 41 to 14? 14. At Kansas City, it's just death and destruction, doom and gloom. <laughs> All the guys on ESPN are saying, that's it for Tom Brady. Poor Tom Brady, it's over for him. And what was Bill's classic all-time line? We are on to Cincinnati. But the thing was, but remember they asked him at, at, the, at the press conference at the end of the game, are you thinking about making a quarterback switch? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Bill Chase. laughs> no. Next question. Next question. But on to Cincinnati. Correct. So they go home the next Sunday and destroy a pretty good Cincinnati team at yes. that point. I think it was 43 they to beat the 14. Off. Yes. It, was, it was in that ballpark. Yes. And it launched them toward the right. Super Bowl that they won against right. the Legion of Boom mm -hmm. in Seattle. Okay, so so now you have Bruce Arians, to me, coming off as, for people around the league, insiders, as a little buffoonish. Like, what, what, what are you doing? Right. What, what what purpose does it, what, what good does it do for your football team to take little sarcastic shots at the GOAT quarterback? Right. Where's it going to get you toward your make-or-break game Sunday against a division rival at Carolina? Gets you nowhere. Right, especially this, Skip, the thing I think, one of the things that a coach, one of the best attributes a coach can have is calmness. Yep. Is that the ebbs and flow. He doesn't get involved with the ebbs and flow. It's not like the sky's falling if we lose and we won the Super Bowl if we win. That's what Coach, Coach Belichick handles that. The great ones handle that. You've been around Coach Landry. I didn't know mm -hmm. Coach Landry. Now, I've been around some coaches that if you lost the game, like, I don't know what we're going to do. Ooh, how, how we overcome that? Mm -hmm. But the really good ones is just here. Yep. They don't, they don't, it's, not, it's not like the, you know, up and down like the stock market. Mm -hmm. And Coach Belichick, that's what, that's what Tom, Tom missed. Coach Belichick provided a calmness that I'm not so sure he get, he's getting that in B.A. Now, I don't know what the, the practice structure is or the meeting structure or guys allowed to come late, this and that, but you best believe when Mike Shanahan, well, look, when Mike Shanahan got stepped up to that podium, everybody was in their seats. It was simple as that. When we, Mike Shanahan was on that feet, when he was, because he was at one end mm -hmm. and we had walkthroughs, mm -hmm. we were there. Ain't all that bull job. And one day, Skip, you know, we supposed to be dressed and guys started coming out there with flip flops and Tim's on. Mm -hmm. Man, Mike looked around and was like, what the hell y'all think this is? Go back inside and put on a, the proper attire to come for a walkthrough.
Okay. That was the end of that. Got it. All right. The, the Brady I defend, the Brady that I admire, is as coachable a superstar as I've ever observed mm -hmm. in your league, yeah. the National Football League, where he is, he, he wants to be coached hard, but he wants to be coached hard behind closed doors. Right. He doesn't want it publicly, nor would you have no, wanted it publicly. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But with Belichick, Belichick was all over him, according to numerous sources right. I've talked to in film sessions. He would single out Brady and call him Brady, right. not Tom. Right. He's Brady. Right. And blast him in front of everybody because he knew Brady would take it. Right. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know if, Brady, if Belichick cared whether he'd take it or not. That's just the way it was going to be. <laughs> right. He would stop practice and blast him in front of everybody because he's Bill Belichick. And he could get away with it because Brady would let him get away with it. He lo Skip, Tom loved what Coach Belichick was able to do for him. But I bet if you put Tom in that chair and you told him you got to tell the truth or else, he'd probably say he wished Coach Belichick would have just given him some credit publicly. Mm -hmm. So you know Tommy played good. And we're not just say Tommy played good and then preface it by saying we had a lot of guys play good. Mm -hmm. Or we had a lot of guys do this. Just say, you know what? Tom was unbelievable today. Mm -hmm. Like all the other coaches have done with their superstar players okay. when they play so well. what was the beginning of the end between those two? It was Jacksonville, <laughs> AFC championship game. Brady, whether it was an accident at home or, as they said, an accident on the football field during practice with Rex Burkhead right. on a handoff, it split open the palm of his throwing hand, yes. and he said it took 20-some stitches. Right. That was on Wednesday. Wednesday. And he played Sunday right. against what was then called Saxonville, mm -hmm. and they were trailing 20 to 10 going to the fourth quarter, and he threw for 138 and two touchdowns in the fourth quarter alone, and they roared back to win the game and go to the Super Bowl to face Philadelphia. Right. After the game, Belichick was asked about how great that was, you know, whatever, and he said it wasn't exactly open-heart surgery, right? <laughs> and I believe that was the beginning of the end because soon after they lost to Philly, and Tom threw a playoff record 505 yards, mm -hmm. and they lost 41-33 to when Belichick's defense, without Malcolm Butler, gave up 41 to the backup quarterback for the Eagles, Tom came out here and did a conference in San, uh, Santa, Monica Santa Monica with Jim, Jim Gray, Gray, and he was asked, do you feel like Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft give you the appropriate gratitude? And he said, I plead the fifth. Well, he okay. wanted, he really wanted to say what Mr. Kraft does, yep. but Coach he Belichick, no. No, okay, <laughs> so there you go. And I was told by several sources close to Brady that he always chuckled sort of sarcastically that Belichick never would socialize with him. They never had a dinner together. They never had a golf date to play together that wasn't forced on them because once they played, they were Pebble. paired together at Pebble Beach. Right. Okay, but that didn't count like it would have to, to go to a course in New England yeah. in the summer. Right. And let's just the two of us play golf. Right. Well, it's Belichick being the general saying arm's length. Right. You know, I don't want to have any personal relations. Well, I think the thing also, Skip, you remember when, when the deflate gate happened, they asked Coach Belichick, Coach Belichick, I don't know about no bad guys. Okay. Ask Tom. Okay, well, he called his own <laughs> yes. press conference yes. on the Saturday before they left, left to go to the Super Bowl. Right. And he threw his quarterback straight under the bus. Like, I don't know no bad Tom, yeah. the, hey, ask, ask Tom. him. I don't know anything about You don't? <laughs> you, you know everything. Now, he, after he said, you know, hey, I wet the balls down, I do this, I freeze them, I do all the things so we'd be used to it. Mm -hmm. But he don't know nothing about no balls. Well, he even went my cousin Vinny because yeah. he said, I'm no Mona Lisa, Lisa DeVito. Vito, right? Right? Vito, uh, yeah. She knew everything about, about cars, right. which saved the case in court. Right. And, and my cousin Vinny, right? Yeah, that, 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 it's, it's, Skip, it's, it's just hard because you got two alpha men and you got two competing for credit. Mm -hmm. Even though they will tell you we're not competing, we're on the same team, we just want the best. Skip, it's just, it's just, it's just that's just the way it yep. is. It's just, Somebody has to get the credit. It's not good enough to 50-50. We don't do 50-50. Yep. I need somebody to get 51, someone get 49. Now, who is it? Okay. And it seems like they started competing. Because in the beginning, Skip, everybody gave Coach Belichick because they ran the football, they played outstanding defense, and Tom, all of a sudden, Tom started being, hold on, this guy won the MVP. This guy's the best player in the league. Now, all of a sudden, people started giving Tom Brady some of the credit. Okay. And the more you gave Tom, the more Coach Belichick wanted to pull back. I still believe that 
Brady was far more valuable than Belichick. Okay. I also believe it's very possible that each of them will find over time they'll never be as great apart as they were together. No, they no. will never be. Mm -mm. It's very possible. Yes. And it, listen, I grew up a big Beatles fan, mm -hmm. and when Lennon and McCartney split, yeah. as great as they were together, they were never quite the no. same apart. Because no. that was all time great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, sometimes you have, sometimes you're better apart than, but these guys, they, I mean, I you know, hey, they're marriages that, you know, you married 20 years, 30 years, and all of a sudden, so you, you know, I guess, Skip, you, they, they say you grow apart. We just grew apart. They grew apart. I was waiting for Shannon's relationship analysis. Yeah, they, they grew apart. Well, only appropriate if you throw that in there. <laughs> but sometimes when you grow up, maybe you got to work a little harder. Maybe you're missing out on what, what could have been. What After 20 been. years, we don't work harder than we could. It's time to go. <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> no mercy. Guys, the Lakers are reportedly interested in pursuing free agent big man Serge Ibaka this offseason. L.A. will only have the mid-level exception to offer Ibaka, who would fit in alongside LeBron and A.D. as a rim protector who can also stretch the floor. Ibaka is one of the best veterans available on the market, and he was a key part of Kawhi's Toronto team that won a title two seasons ago. Gosh, that title feels so long mm. ago at this point. Shannon, should the Lakers pursue Ibaka? Excuse me, you know what that means, right? Mm. <laughs> title, title, yeah, yeah. Mm. Title, title, yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Absolutely, we should go get Surge. Mm. A blocker. Mm. Ooh, a guy that can protect the paint, stretch the floor, hit the three. Mm. He shot 38%, almost 39% from the three-point range last year. So can you imagine a lineup with Braun, AD, Surge? I don't care who else you put out there. You put me and Jenny out there. Mm. Hey, you got you a championship caliber mm. team right mm. there, Skip. And we ain't done yet either. Mm. We gonna add some more pieces. Really? Back to back, Jack. Mm. So, question. <laughs> How are you going to afford a Serge Ibaka who's going to command a lot of money? No, you, you realize very quietly he had a career year in Toronto last okay. year. He averaged 15, a career high. Okay. Eight rebounds, second highest of his career. High 1.4 assists, career high. That, that was an extreme. You want to win a title? He'd have made money. He shot 39% from three, 72% from the line. That's money, money, money. Oh, that was easy. He, he doesn't want pennies from the Whoa. Lakers. Wait a second. He already got his ring thanks to the Clipper, Kawhi Leonard. It's a done deal. He just wants to get paid, and the Lakers cannot pay well, him. Why didn't Tom Brady take all that money from Tampa? Mm. Why he only took 25 this million? This isn't about Tom Brady. Oh, no, 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 it's no, no, about no. LeBron James. Exactly. In your ability, you don't want Brady to get no more titles. Mm. And you know the more play, good players that we get, like everybody else, mm. because we got space. Mm. We got money. You we don't got... have big space. First of all. You got LeBron and AD. You got to pay them. AD, uh, AD's up. So mm. AD might come in, take a little less money. He will not. And that's not just see, see, there you go. You always trying to sow discontentment, mm. discord. Mm. But we're not going to let you do it. Oh, that's right. His agent is LeBron's agent. Now, don't so. worry. See, there you go. See, LeBron all that. doesn't take a penny less. All that is unnecessary. Mm. We don't need you to talk about it. We know mm. who their representation mm. is. All that matters is you're going to lose playoff Rondo to the Clippers. That's going to be the key free agent move. And you can... Let, let's say you do sign Serge. He'd be a nice backup to AD. Who's AD going to be backup? Like, we might start him. Well, well, there are enough basketballs to go around. Cause he's he's going to want to shoot it. We, he's going to shoot it from distance. We will let him shoot it from yep. distance. Yep. Don't you mm. worry about See, you worried about things right now. Don't worry about that. That's mm. why we got Rob. Oh, Rob Palenka. Mm. That's why he in charge. Mm. Let him handle this. Mm. Put those pieces together. Think about this. After your guy, sneaky, old sneaky Kawhi. Mm. Pulled a fast one on us. Y'all thought you left us for dead. Mm. But little did you know. See, Skip, sometimes when people try to bury you, all they don't realize they planted you. Mm. That's what you did. Kawhi thought he buried us. But he, in actuality, he planted us. And mm. we grew a championship. Yeah, because your, un, your unsung MVP was playoff <laughs> Rondo. Don't do that, Skip. Hold on. You told, oh, Avery Bradley. What you going to do without Avery? Avery, Avery, Avery. Mm. What we going to do is win a title. Avery mm. got a ring and he's going to be back. Mm. Now what? All I know is that the missing piece to the Clippers puzzle is named Rajon Rondo, and he will be a Clipper. You know it, and I know it, and you're going to be in big trouble. You still got the rock in your shoe. Huh? Play IP. Yeah. E.E. -E. Yeah, he ain't going to win. Oh, oh back's IP. Oh, back see, boy, I'll let you laugh next year. <laughs> yep. Hey, you know, he might be a changed man. I saw where he, he got engaged. He's getting married. And sometimes marriage settles things down. But it ain't going to change a thing for you. Mm. You in trouble. We going back to back, Jack. Mm.
<laughs> Serge is going to say, I played with a real stud in Kawhi. No, he didn't. I mean, no, he didn't. I don't Kawhi, need that Kawhi, diva. Kawhi didn't even want to talk to him. Mm. Kawhi didn't want to talk he to him. They talk tried, to anybody. They tried to high five him coming out the tunnel. He like, nah, go. That's mm. why. So mm. now look at us. We're mm. going to get them back to back. Skip. That'll be five. Mm. Five for five. Mm. You know, five. Just watch that team in the basement. <laughs> five dollar foot mm. long. Yeah, that's what you, you're, about, you're worth level, about five dollars. <laughs> Finishing the show with yep. that is it for Undisputed. We are back at the same time tomorrow morning. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. <laughs>